You, you on mute, bro. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. America must see that riots do not develop out of thin air. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society, which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. In the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. What is it that America has failed to hear? Fail to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last few years. Has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. It has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice, equality, and humanity. And so, in a real sense, our nation summers a riot are caused by our nation's winters of delay. And as long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these recurrences of violence and riots over and over again. Social justice and progress are the absolute guarantors of riot prevention. Welcome to another episode of the Rome and CJ show <laughs> brought to you on this Sunday. I'm one of your hosts. I'm CJ. What's up, Rome? What's going on, man? What's going on? How y'all doing? Yeah, uh, this this topic, man, I'm you know, because we I'm just thinking of like, how do we who the coalition build with and just analyzing the reformist just strategy, man. I'm not seeing how we're able to do it because of this specific topic of hero worshiping is a real problem. Like yeah. it's a real problem. Like they just voted for NATO and it's like, it's like a, you can hear a pin drop, but when he, but when Joe Biden talking about this, uh, what did he just announce? He just announced, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, par pardoning some people. They yeah. jumped on that, yeah. got content out right away. Yeah. But when they voted for NATO, I think one of them covered it maybe. Yeah, they ain't gonna cover nothing like that because it's gonna expose uh, uh, their whole grift of they actually support NATO. They just want to act like they're on the left. They want to act, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, what they call it a big tent. <laughs> they want to act like they have some type yeah. of big tent, but they actually are in support of NATO. They actually are in support of white supremacy holding the uh, the stronghold on the world that it has today. You know, uh, if they wasn't. And we would see it. Uh, we would hear a different tone from these people. So, so somebody would push back you, not me, because I agree. But <laughs> other people like that that like them would say, "What do you mean they approve of white supremacy? What do you mean, Rome? Can you explain what you mean to those that would say, hey, that's a little bit going too far? Make the I mean, connection for those people.' If, if they didn't agree with white supremacy, they wouldn't be arming Israel. They wouldn't be, you know, arming." Uh, mm. uh, you know, the CIA's a a AOC one. gave millions of dollars to, to CIA agents, which uh, we know CIA yeah. agents are still waging war on uh, indigenous people, waging war on people of Yemen, waging war on the people of Middle East mm -hmm. and in Africa, mm -hmm. which is bomb Somali. So if you're not upholding and you're not supporting white supremacy, what is it that you're upholding? See, I can sit here and say that, yes, gang banging is bad, but my crew isn't. But overall... <laughs> gang banging is bad and you shouldn't be a gang banger, right and that's a fucking around, good ass example that's yeah. a fucking good ass example yeah. go ahead no go ahead man that's a fucking good ass example yeah, I'm just saying, like, if you're around one you are you 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 are one like uh they like to say uh azov only has like a thousand something nazis 
open Nazis in their uh in their uh in their armies and their militaries and whatnot, despite the fact that Ukraine has you know what I'm saying the Nazis have a real party in Ukraine, despite the fact let's just put that let's just push this to the side. They say that there's only a couple of uh, a thousand people that's open uh, that's Nazis in the in the army and the military in their ranks, right? I always ask this question, CJ. Remember, you know what I'm about to ask. If me and you was holding up red rags, they would call us bloods. You know, even if we didn't hold up red rags, if we was surrounded by people with 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 gang uh, uh clothing, <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, like yeah, remember, yeah, yeah gang yeah, affiliated clothing yes. or something, yeah. You're not only guilty by association, but you're guilty with blood in your hands. See, there's a difference from people that support the people that support these policies and whatnot. Yeah, it's blood on their hands, but it's nothing like, you know, actually signing off on a bill that's going to kill thousands of people and uh, millions more in the generations to come, if they if they ever come. That's that's a good point when you add that if they ever uh, come. So let me just put up this headline. So people can see, like, we're not exaggerating. Now I'm going to get to the uh, to the chat check in just a second. But this is not, a, like, this is another topic, voting for war. This is not even the NATO article. But, like, like, <laughs> like these people deserve to be severely critiqued yes. in the way that we're doing and probably even further. But when that different. critique comes, they, when that critique comes, Rome, the... The you know the the captain save a politician comes out. You get what I'm saying? They 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 the big S save a politician comes out, and the hero the hero worshiping comes out. But go ahead, Rome. You were gonna say something. No, I, I was just I was just agreeing with you, and I was uh, stating that I see no difference in between the progressives and uh, corporate Democrats, especially if you look at their voting record. They all tend to vote as a block when it comes to things that uh, like war, funding the Iron Dome killing Palestinian children, uh, bombing Yemen. They all come together as a block when it comes to these types of votes. But when it comes to, you know, us getting health care, better infrastructure, everything is means test. Everything has to be means tested now. So I, I see no different, like with, with her voting record now, if she's only a couple of years in in, uh, in office now, yeah, she only has held office terrible. for a couple of years. Imagine how her, how her record will look by the time she's by the time she has a uh, Nancy, you know, a Pelosi, like Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> yes, it's gonna be horrible, uh, horrible, horrible. And th right. you don't get you don't get better. You know what I'm saying? Th these things don't get better with the same uh, uh, with the same abusers. Your abuser don't don't uh, let down on you. He just learned new ways of abusing you. So I might not have to keep you locked in a room. I might not have to beat you all day. That because I already beat you down and broke you down. Now you have Stockholm syndrome. I can even let you out to the grocery store. You're going to come back. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how these voters are. That's the same mentality of a street pimp with with uh, yeah. street prostitution. That's yeah. the same sort of mentality. So it's controlling the mind, um, which which this ruling class also understands, which is why they all. Why do you think billionaires buy up media? It's not because it's a profitable business buying a newspaper. <laughs> It's because they understand you control the masses if you control the information that's yes. flowed to them. So that is a that is a great um, great example. But let's let's do to a, let's get into a chat check just really quick because that's the normal process. We'll, we you know we are we jump right into the conversation because this is an important conversation. But happy Sunday, CJ. Uh, I don't know what the, I'm going to put it up there. I, I won't I won't screen him. So let's just read what he says. The PL the PLP. In the 1960s was a fraternal party with China. We earned their respect for our active support for the Harlem Rebellion in 1964 and being the first demonstrate, uh, being the first to demonstrate against the Vietnam War. So that's a great comment. Uh, thank you, Ira. I believe that's how you say Ira. Um, uh think global act global i have a similar saying <laughs> um or not me the organization has a uh, rbn has a similar saying and when our our website launches which will be soon it's probably going to launch before 
it's going to launch before the the uh, activist summit. Um, it's it's organ it's mobilize nationally, organize locally. Okay. It has to be a national plan. People have to feel they're connected to a bigger thing, i.e., Black Panther chapters. And this is why so, RBN, go ahead. You know, that's why RBN go out of our way to let you know that we uh we uh, have solidarity with you know South South America, Africa, you yes. know, you know, continent of Africa, complete. You know, uh I know a lot of places aren't as well as they should be, but we're gonna get there. It's gonna you know, we're gonna Process hold solidarity right with the people of Russia, we're gonna hold solidarity with the people of Ukraine. We hold solidarity with all working class people that want a better future. You know, uh, that wants a better future. <laughs> some of you, guys yeah, you have to want it because there are some that have that Stockholm syndrome where right now they're they're like you say a minimum wage. Like I, I put up this tweet about a minimum wage. It's people workers saying, "Oh, that would be bad." Everything it's like, oh my god, the brainwashing you have to go through where you think raising minimum wage and people people were responding like minimum thirty dollar minimum wage is below. Yeah, it should it's, be like something like in the fifty. They, they were saying it should be like something like fifty-two dollars. Somebody yeah. put, they put receipts. You know how they do in our, oh, yeah. in our tweets. They put receipts in there. It was like, look, this graph. It should be fifty-two dollars according to inflation back yeah. from when uh, what the seventies. You see how these people never say anything. Like we we are literally typing out money, printing out money, giving it to Ukraine. We just gave another twelve billion dollars to Ukraine. It's funny how these things. Make our uh, inflation go up, make our taxes go up, but war never does, killing never does, murder. Right. You know what I'm saying? All the money that we put into weaponry, and it, it, somehow that just get left out of the picture. But when we say something that we need, when the proletarians say that we need something, it's always, hey, well, that needs to be mean tested because we don't know how it's gonna, we don't know how it's gonna turn out when you giving a fucking uh, a foreign country billions upon billions of, of our tax dollars at least we'd be in full control of our money and our in our uh and, and, and what we got going on we don't even know what's going on we don't know the full percentage of the uh of the actual money that's touching ukraine we don't know the percentage of the, of the money that we're sending out that's actually helping the people of ukraine i guarantee if they are if they are starving us here if you have to, if you have to suffer here in America, I guarantee America isn't doing anything for the people of Ukraine. Why would they do anything for the proletarian of Ukraine when they don't do anything for their own proletarian? That makes no sense. You're not going to convince me that these men are pumping billions of dollars into Ukraine to save it. They're trying to save face. That's what they're trying to save. They want to. They want the stronghold around the world. And if you can look at the map, the maps of NATO, look at how how NATO is mapped out around Ukraine, basically surrounding Russia. Now, we talked about Russia being invaded before. Russia has been invaded through Ukraine. It's a weak spot. And America is trying to take advantage of that weak point Ukraine is today. And they made sure that they, they kept it where it was at. And they actually threw coups. In that country to make sure that when they are ready to go after uh, Russia, they have the front door. So miss me with all this. They're just trying to save us. Trying to save who? We have been killing. We have been killing millions of people. People are being born with three eyes, one leg, five fucking, uh, uh man. No, cut it out. Y'all not about to get me with this, uh, with this white savior bullshit. The West ain't here to save no ain't nobody ain't here to save nobody but them damn yeah, selves. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, you have to understand. Sixty thousand people. Sixty thousand people go just die, bro. A year. Sixty thousand people just die in our country. But you, but they care about the people of Ukraine. You know, children are starving. <laughs> it in make sense. No shoes, it make no sense. coat. Ain't prepared for the winter. Can't fucking pay their light bill. Can't afford gas. But they care about the people of Ukraine. You. you you really think that? And when we have a map of all the bombing that America has done to black communities, over 30 bombings in, a, in the states, you got me fucked up. You think I'm falling for that bullshit? Ain't enough propaganda in the world 
to have me go ahead and root for the West for one <laughs> and root for nuclear war for two. You people are idiots. Right. But this is how this is this is this is this is how hero worshiping gets dangerous because yeah. we're talking about it right now. It's like you see how it's connected to all of this. This is where it gets dangerous because now we're in nu we're getting close to nuclear war and you're still in, you're still going cheer cheer rah rah to the democrats because your person that you like is still in doing cheer cheer rah rah. You see how it's dangerous? <laughs> There's, there's no way to strategically like coalition with anybody like that if you're smart. Like that that is a that has danger <laughs> written all over it. Um, but let's let's pause here. Let's finish our chat check or our chat check we did. Um, our like check. We're at about seventy five likes uh, and about one hundred and fifty people watching. Let's push that to one twenty five, and that'll jump a lot of people into the chat. And now, because we're about to get deep, deep into the conversation, because I'm going to go to my notes. Um, I wrote down just some things I want to make sure uh, we touch upon, Rome. Um, so let's let me. Oh, yeah. So let's uh, let's push to 125. Also, um, streams like this are unannounced. So if you want to make sure you get notifications of this, join our Substack. You get notifications for unannounced, for everything, um, even videos that like uploading clips, not necessarily live. I try to send those out um, at some point. They may not be the day at launch. But Man, fuck this. If you don't like the stream, you get seven years of bad luck. <laughs> seven years of bad luck. Yeah. So like the stream. Let's get let's get some more people. It literally is literally going to pump more people into the stream if you do that. Um, and then. Uh, uh subscribe to our substack also just thank you again for the support the um the jb fundraiser raised fifty four hundred dollars to, to secure his housing yeah, that was good um, and i think it'll be good for another at least a year or uh, six months i can't remember if he said six months or something it, he'll it'll it'll help him i'm not gonna say set forever but it'll help him and this is the slogan i was talking about earlier for those that were uh uh came in later all right so um let's get to it uh the thing oh my notes here so this is what i have rome um how do you build a coalition with a group of of with a group of people whose policy stances are flexible so imagine this Rome. Hmm. we go we go in and you you kind of talk about this how it's e it was easy to be left when you were speaking about crystal ball when it was Trump. Yeah. So we go into this coalition. Let's say we and you go into this coalition with this other group during Trump. Oh, yeah, anti-war, because Trump is in office. So they yeah. really oh, yeah, anti-war under all circumstances, blah, blah, blah. Now Biden gets elected. And now for some reason, they're starting to see nuances that just appear out of the scare, clear blue sky on why this is now good to be part of NATO and NATO is okay. Like, how do you strategically coalition with somebody who whose stances could change? Yeah. Like, they literally could change, at, and we don't have any idea when they change. Can you speak to that, Rome, or do you have any opinion? I, I, I believe that? that you you can't until we all until we all revamp ourselves. We all have to go through that rehab. You know how it was when back before all this got started. We all had to rehab ourselves. We all had to get. Get our shit right, man. We all just fell for that bullshit. Democratic Party, Tulsi Gabby, all that bullshit, right? Got to get your mind right and learn who uh, who are you fighting for? Are you fighting for this politician or are you fighting for the proletarian? And that's the line that you got to draw in the sand. So when Bernie Sanders moved further to the right and said, vote for Joe Biden because it's going to save democracy, I said, what democracy? <laughs> I didn't move with him. I moved with the people. I moved for the people. And that's what we have to do. And I say you can't build a coalition with these people until they get their mind right. And like I always say, every everybody has a place in a, in the revolution, but some of these people place will be on the wall because years of propaganda, generations, I should say, generations of propaganda has been yeah, they have been bathed in it. Uh, they have been fed it from the bosom of white supremacy since a, since a toddler. So 
it's, it's, it's a part of the DNA now. And some of them are really going to fight to preserve this white, this, uh, this white supremacy, this white supremacy and kill you in order to keep it. So I say, like, like I always say, uh, like some, I was talking to somebody who was telling me not to uh, have white people in a, in a care party. I said, so you just want a whole bunch of black people to be sitting ducks. You don't, you don't need, you don't need no, no front lines. You don't need no white people going front line for you. We should just all just let all the black people go out and fight and die, right? All right, then. So if there is a place, and if these people say that they want to fight, then this is their time to actually prove it. Because we have done real harm to our people, misleading them to the Democratic Party, misleading them to whatever party, to whatever group. Now is our time to wash our hands. And this is what uh, we wash our hands with forming the revolution. We formed a revolution by throwing away that bullshit and getting and getting real uh, uh, with reality and being one with your people. But you can't uh, uh, you can't be second guessing the proletarian uh, uh, if you haven't second guessed your uh, your favorite politicians, right? So me and you can sit here and somebody can donate five thousand dollars to the stream. That would just be all that they are talking about. These guys are making the grifters. They're making five thousand dollars. Blah blah blah. blah. Somehow, their fucking Democratic candidate just made millions of fucking dollars. Just beat their motherfucking <laughs> thing, right? We, they yep. don't ask where that money come from. They don't ask where is it going. They don't even give a fuck, right? So don't question a proletarian if you're not going to question your favorite uh, progr- uh, that is progressive a great point. Or politician, no matter That's who they great, are. Great point. Because we are here. That to is a great, to great point, eat. Rome. Um, but just got to shout out that expression. Bosom of, weed, of white right supremacy, bosom of white supremacy. Go ahead. Um, that uh, that expression or that analogy from from Rome is spot on. So let's let's move to some more of my uh, notes here. Um, hero worshiping creates a barrier between those doing the hero worshiping and anyone else that could possibly team up with them. And there's many ways that that could happen. One way that that can happen is they don't like us critiquing. So all of a sudden, um, the coalition we have is not as strong, or the possibility of coalition is not a possibility because they feel some type of way about the way we're talking about somebody they like. Because you have to understand how a person internalizes, let me put this back up here, how a person internalizes critique of somebody they like. So if they like AOC and Bernie Sanders, and then I critique them, if it's hero, hero worship, this is where it gets hero worship. So let's let's explain that first. So I should have started there before, but I want to get... See, if there's a urban dictionary meaning, and then I'm going to sort of give uh, let's see, 10 synonyms. I'm going to put this on the screen. I'm just trying to find out which one. All right, so let's, okay, let's go with this one. So this is the dictionary meaning, and then I'm going to kind of give you an understanding connect, uh, connected to politics. Is this it? Oh, shoot. I thought I... Oh, there we go. Now it's going to go. Um, hero worship. Let's put... Good, you're back. I just I'm just officially looking up the dictionary meaning and then I'm going to give what I think hero worshiping is in this context. So hero worship uh, to feel or express express hero worship for wait, I'm looking for the basic meaning hero worship. Maybe this is it here. Veneration of a hero, foolish or excess, excessive ad- adulation for an adult. I think this is a good close to what I'm speaking of. I would have to look up veneration. I don't know what veneration is. So let's look that up. And then we're going to come back to this. 
I am the type that look up words. I feel like, Go ahead, bro. Like uh, hero worship should stop with Dragon Ball Z. You know what I'm saying? Uh, DC, <laughs> Marvel. I think you know because I, I got Goku tatted on my arm. You know I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm not a uh, I'm not a stan of of any heroes or I don't have any type of uh, fictional heroes or whatnot. But that's where it should stop because all of all of these things are fictional. You know there is. There is no Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders can't undo everything America has been doing before and after J, uh, uh, FDR and JFK. No. All this shit is fictional. And I think this is where it should start and stop. Sci-fi films, you know. Uh, uh, keep that shit in your TV and your television. But when you get out here, these people are regular people. And this is why, you know, uh, it's so hard to, con to convince some of these people to actually go out and do something for the revolution or something revolutionary because they feel like these people are on a whole nother level. They feel like they are untouchable. They are regular fucking people. They are fucking right. humans. They catch right. diseases. <laughs> they, they go to sleep. They wake up. They put clothes on just like your ass. That's a great <laughs> point. Um, this is just, just so you know, uh, then veneration. I'm assuming, well, I guess I can press this. Veneration. Yeah, that is the right way. Respect or awe. So it's like in awe of somebody, but that awe is inspired by the dignity, wisdom, dedication, or talent of a person. So that is what so that's what they that's what they mean by veneration. So so let's go back to the hero worship definition. So veneration of a hero. So it's in awe of somebody of a hero but i think this is what i'm more talking about <laughs> you're gonna call niggas foolish <laughs> and that's some real shit it is foolish like why would you put your your word and everything behind some fucking human this is why i don't go to therapy because that shit <laughs> what the fuck can another human tell me nigga you depressed too shut up we all going through this capitalist bullshit like <laughs> i hear you uh but let's i zoomed in there but hero worship and uh it's the second meaning is what we're talking about here oops i was trying to highlight it but yeah there we go um foolish or excessive adulation for an adult and i think it's both it's foolish and excessive yes it, you, like you, it's you, both go ahead. go ahead talk about excessive you see how they come after us excessive no they ain't, they need to find a they need to update that these people are uh, are obsessed. Like, <laughs> no, it's a whole different. Like, bro, it's a whole different level now. Now that we all on the internet, get our Twitters and, and Facebooks. These people are are man. You go back to the world Let me star. Stand. I mean, not world star. I said that world socialist. I'm gonna. So let's look up some other articles. Actually, I have them uh, clipped here. I just want to look at another he a couple of more headlines to kind of prove. Oh, and let me go to my next point. Hero worshiping gives a politician a false sense of accomplishment and superiority. Because if they're if they if they are if they can send out a tweet about socialism and vote for NATO and you still praise them the same way, you see how it's giving them a false false, false sense of like they could do whatever. Like it, it doesn't have to be connected to any sort of policy. Whatever they say makes it socialist. It doesn't matter if this it's socialist or not. This is a dangerous game. This is a dangerous game. This is why playing. I say that. Yeah, it's a this dangerous that, game, yeah. and they are. Uh, it's a, it, it's good to have people like you guys in the chat. You know, what I'm saying people on Twitter. Uh, I know there's other uh, indie media outlets out there that's really pushing. Uh, for socialism and pushing the truth about socialism is not enough, but anything is better than is better than nothing, especially in these days. Uh, but what these politicians are doing is they are shitting on the fights and the revolutions that our grandparents, our great grandparents have actually lived through, have shaped and died in themselves, you know, from South America to America uh, itself. When we had our uh, our civil rights uh, fights out here. They are shitting on everything that we have built. And it's time to take back what we have made. You know, uh, and um, enough with meeting these people on their terms, on their time. 
We are the people. We are the people. You know what I'm saying? We don't come uh, where a politician wa wants us to. We don't go where they tell us to. They do that for us. We we tell them what to do, right? So that's what, if, if you guys want to, uh, uh, some guys say that it is a way to work with PMCs and whatnot, but them, P them PMCs, they have to cross class lines, not us. We have crossed class lines right. multiple right. times. Right. That is such a great, great point, and nobody has ever said it. That needs to be on a on a shirt, Rome. We are not to cross class line. They are to cross into out into our territory, not the other way around. That is such a great point. That shit needs to be put on a shirt, on a drawing. If you could draw, yeah, put that yeah. on a shirt, or yeah, some kind of design. Man, how many Rome, times have we Rome gave up? We didn't gave up on our morals and our principles. To vote for these people, hold our nose to vote for these people. For what? <laughs> like, come on now. It's time, it's time for them to come across. They, they already got their success, they got their book deals, they got their millions of dollars. If you really want to fight for us, then cross them lines like you say you would. Fight for us like you claim that you would. Go against the go against the uh go against the system as a whole and not just the GOP. Because if you are a socialist in America, you should have the education and know that it's not just one party. And if you are telling these people that it's just one party or a half of a party, then you are a lie and you should be dealt with. <laughs> Damn right. No compromise. So 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 there are some questions about because the title, the you know, PMC, a PMC, the technical term, the, that's the an acronym for professional managerial class and let me just play a video from professor Catherine Liu um that uh she wrote a book she's in the she's a pmc but she advocates against the pmc and she has a book called the case against the professional managerial class and we brought her on to rbn so there is a clip um, there's a couple of clips, so I'll start with this one. I don't know if I'm going to play them back to back, but at least I'll start with this one. Um, the professional managerial mm. class's interests are not aligned with worker interests. This is the exact reason why you ha they have to cross over to us, to the worker side. Because if we cross over for them, we're fighting for things that's not going to affect us, which is what has been going on. It just makes they're set sense. Right. They're setting the agenda. And then so, like, look at me. I got all these pores, all these pores giving their last five, ten dollars to me. Look at me, Democratic Party. Look what I can do. I can I can sheep go all these fucking idiots. They really believe that we can make a change inside of a corporation. <laughs> yeah, a private corporation that in court have said they they could do whatever. They literally are legally able to cheat. It's their private corporation. They're literally, literally able to cheat, but um, let's let me bring in this. Part. Oh, this video. That's what I was trying to do. Let let me bring in this video, uh, Rums, and I want to get your 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 uh, you know reaction to it. But uh, Americans have a hard time focusing on what it means to be a worker because the professional managerial class. So that's this part of this video, and there's another video. I'll bring up later to show you from her that kind of talks about it. So this kind of talks about the professional managerial class. And when we're talking about hero worshiping, that's exactly what we're talking about. This hero worshiping almost overlaps directly with the class divide on the left. Almost directly. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the left way of worshiping celebrities. Like we, yeah. we're not really into yes. celebrities that much. But These this is for celebrities. <laughs> yes, Rome. Rome got the analogies. Whatever you smoke, that must be some Cali stuff. You got the analogies today. Uh, that's on fire. Let's let's play this. It's like uh, two minutes. That's where I'll stop it. There. Our interests, PMC's interests, are not aligned with workers' interests. Can you can you explain what you mean by that, or can you go into more detail about that particular part? Um. So, you know, even when they're progressives and they say like, oh, we want um, just social justice and we want equality, they don't really, the PMC as a class generally has a really hard time dealing with like um, workers' interests and workers' struggles. And they don't really see themselves as workers or people who can be organized. 
because they identify with the with the values of the managers and the capitalists. Mm. So it's all about extracting efficiency and labor from I'm just going to say that handshake Nick did, that was you, Rome. That's this is you were at his house during this taping yeah. right here. Yeah. And you walked in and gave him that. Uh, I don't have you talking, but you do. Uh, you see, yeah, I was running. I, think I, was, uh, I, I, I believe I was cooking uh, for the homeless shelter. Uh, at this time. Yeah, that day y'all had it. It had something to go out. All right. So just wanted to shout that out. Laborers, like, uh, you know, um, like saying shut up and just go vote just oh oh yeah that's like an incredible thing um and i think all the culture war things are about that mm -hmm. you know like it's all about cultural consumption lifestyle practices this is a lot about what my book is about right because it's really hard if we have if americans have a hard time focusing on what it is to be a worker it's because of this class all of our ideological content is about like empowering ourselves through consumption habits like oh i'm you know, I want to go green. I have solar panels. I do this. I do that. It's yeah. all people who are really wealthy who can make those choices who appear progressive. But what it is to be a worker, what it is to have a working day, how that working day is um, governed, all of these nitty gritty issues, these are workers issues and um, what our benefits are, what our um, health care is. You guys just did that whole thing on health care. Do you know the single most important thing right now for the American worker, women, I don't care what um, and um, what race you are, is Medicare for all. Why was that such a hard issue for people to wrap their heads around in 2016 and in 2020? <laughs> Yeah, why was that so hard to wrap your heads around in order to try to force the vote? Um, and what was so funny, Rome, she goes on a lot of PMC uh, for interviews about stuff. Uh, they like to have her on. And I in this interview, if you watch the whole thing, I kind of bring it up in the, in the end. And I'm like, yeah, no. I said, no, you, you go on a lot of PMC people that we're talking about those exact people. And she was like, yeah. oh. and she knew, she knew though. She, she knew she's a Marxist. <laughs> she knew she's a Marxist. So she's, she's real down to earth. I like uh Catherine uh, Lou, but you get the, the point she makes. So it's, it's really, we have people who have the mic Rome, who's the ones in these positions of power not just in media. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about who's in these positions of power. They're all part of the professional managerial class. Yes. So their list of priorities are simply not a list that includes our priorities. That's just simply what how, it how is. They get in a position that they are in today. They put the career first. When exactly. is it? When, when have a business, a business person ever, you know, uh, like, you know what? Fuck it. This is enough money. <laughs> when have we ever seen that? And in, in, in today's age, no. Because these capitalists are running crazy. They always are, career. And they never go away from the career, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, they would never, they never go, go away from their career. And they would throw you under the bus to save their career. Uh, you see how, uh, how AOC tried to use Chris Smalls again and try to throw people under the bus. Hey, you're not in my district. I don't want to fucking work for you. Like, hold on, motherfucker. I gave you thousands She of did something again? Or are you talking about the well, last I'm talking one? About back then, yeah, uh, you know, the last one. Yeah, the last one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, it's going to help. It's going to help her career. You know, uh, with all these people trying to unionize again, and even if she, even though she didn't lift a finger, you know, besides her Twitter fingers, <laughs> she's still going to get credit, and, it, and it's going to help her career in the end. And while the people of, while the people of Staten Island in New York is still going through troubles with their union, while Chris Smalls is still going through troubles with this union, Bernie Sanders and AOC just use it as an opportunity for a photo op. Yeah, they, they're, they're not they're not backing them. They're not doing anything else. That's it. And that's why I have to explain to people that Bernie Sanders is low key the grim reaper of unions. Yes, he have made he ha, he has helped a lot of unions, but a lot of unions have, you know, <laughs> went dead as soon as he went to go march with them and whatnot. There's there's never no follow. And we've seen that firsthand here when we had the Kellogg's uh, uh, union yeah. leader here on our show. When they said that they lost negotiations, even with the support of Bernie Sanders, there, you know how much like, support he Bernie Sanders did. He didn't put, right. he didn't put any it. pressure on any lawmakers. He didn't threaten anybody. He just came up here, shook some hands, took some pictures, and goodbye. He, he's not playing power how he should be, and 
this is what happens. Now the people are still working under those same conditions. Some are even worse than it was a year ago. They're still getting the same wages. So <laughs> what? What? How, how did Bernie Sanders help that? Help that union? How did AOC help that union? Where's the follow up? There isn't, and oh. there, there never will be. But they're gonna come around on midterms. If you're doing good, if you're doing good, your show doing good. You don't talk shit about me. We we'll come on revolutionary black. Guy. <laughs> don't talk shit about me. Right. Pump help, you up. Help, help me push through the through, through these midterms. We we'll come talk to you. It's all about me, not you, motherfucker. <laughs> so, so just to recap for those that's just joining, we're talking about hero worship, and some of the points we've covered is. How do you build coalition with a group whose policy stances are flexible um, going from president to president? If it's, it's more it's more staunch when a Republican is in and then when a, when Biden is in, then their their progressive policy stances are a little bit more flexible. We also talked about hero worshiping, creating barriers between uh, those that hero worshiping and anyone who may critique the people they like. And then this last point is what we're talking about now, Rome, these last two here. Hero worshiping gives a politician a false sense of accomplishment and superiority, but zero in on this second part. Hero worshiping feeds a politician's bad behavior and induces corruption. Yes. That's what it does. Look, look so, what I mean when people was, uh, when AOC, when AOC was wearing them damn dresses and doing all that dumb shit. And she was. Exactly. Exactly. She keep, she keep going to these Met Gallas. They don't like, come on, man. Like at what point is there at what point is there a aggressive adversarial mm -hmm. come what at what point what do they have to do because I can't they voted for NATO and it's and it's it is no no coverage and I, I'll show you we can go to majority report type in NATO and and Bernie Sanders and see if anything anything pops up on that shit but let, let's play this video right here, Rome. This is also Catherine Liu. Now, I, I did this on, you know, I had her. So when I had her come on, I researched a lot of her background, a lot of her content online. That's how I found out she went on all these shows. So she was on Jacobin. Oh, this is Jacobin's. Go ahead. That's what. I, thank you. You just go reminded ahead. me. And the other point go I ahead, wanted to ahead. point out uh, that you had uh, said a false sense of accomplishment. Yes. Nick pointed out, why the fuck is Cori Bush writing the book? <laughs> right? Why the fuck is she yes. writing the book? What have you got? What? Okay, you don't I, you don't work for me. Okay, whatever. That's gonna be your defense. But what have what you got? What does that mean? What does that oh, mean? She doesn't work for you. Look, she don't work for me. I'm not in her district. Who told right? who told you that? Don't, I'm just let me let me address this, this right now. Let, this, what, this is what the PMC worshippers. This is what that they is ridiculous. This is their. But even if I let them have that argument. Because I can go to the people in her district and go ask them today, what have she done? And they can say, it's squillity dot, motherfucker. She's not even here. I bet bread. But every time somebody gets their ass whooped by the police, she'd be there to fucking dance for your fucking rights. That's what she let accomplished. Me, dancing yeah, let me, let, uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, man. Uh, let, let me debunk there. this right here. Let me debunk this, this talking point of you're not in my district. You're not a local representative. You are a national representative. The local people just sent you are the people who said, hey, go represent us nationally. So you are our constituent. You're, everything you're doing has to do with national tax money, yes. not state tax money. So that's a completely absurd concept. I never know. I, I like, never know. because I didn't live in your district. I can't critique to you, and I I don't have expectations. You're dealing with national decisions. The people locally are just saying, "Go represent us nationally." Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you don't respond to us. That's absurd. Go ahead, Ron. I, I see if we were speaking on a mayor, but I'm, exactly I'm, I'm, that's mayor different. And got power to vote for fucking NATO. No. And got power to give billions of dollars right. to these fucking no. They don't do nothing locally. These people we're talking about, the 535 members of Congress, uh, House and, and Senate, they don't none of their their stuff is nothing is local. Yeah. So what are you talking about? 
None of the stuff you're voting for, Jamal Bowman, who said that to somebody who who, who came out and, and put him on blast in public. Yeah. You're not in my constituent. What does that matter? Just these people locally said, go represent us. You are, you are national representatives. So you are nationally being critiqued because you're making national decisions with national money. So let's put that to rest. With your bald head national ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's, so let's play this clip, Rome. Uh, she she spits fire here. What I do is I show her a clip of when she was on Jacobin, and then we then she discusses it with uh, Nick and I. So I'll play the clip now. It's about two minutes and ten seconds. Uh oh, they got to act up right here. They I'm are really getting you know. Yeah. So it ain't no thing. I'll just refresh it. Um, it ha- it it happens specifically on Twitter. Like if, yeah. if I pull up a video and I just let it sit and I don't let it like I don't play, it'll like have that little stuck little thing. So man, I might you know what? I might as well write a fucking book. Fuck it. I'm about to come out with a book. I'm about to go to some Matt galleries. I'm about to go fucking <laughs> cry at the border. Maybe you motherfuckers will take me serious, right? Is that is that what it takes to get the blue check? No, I think I think you. Sh- I don't know. I don't know if that's what it takes to get a blue check, but I do think you should write a book. Maybe all of us should, but but you specifically and talk about what you're seeing on tour for the poor. Damn it, tour for the poor. Yeah, it's fifty states. Just <laughs> all the places you've been, and just kind of talk about what's going on. Okay, now the video is ready to play. I just refreshed it, so let's listen. Uh, but neither of which represent. Uh, the working class, and you know, I would go so far as to say neither of these parties represent most working people. So I play that also to pivot um, a little bit this conversation to these parties because this is specifically why we advocate not to support Democrats or Republicans because of what she just said here, which neither one of them work represents the working class. And we want the working class to be, we want us, we want our ideas to be represented and not for people to say, wait next time, not wait till next time. This is not the right time. So we advocate, and I must say, we advocate aggressively for the working class not to support either of these parties. But can you, um, can you speak to what, how she defined um, what we we can call it the Brahmin left or just the upper echelon, but let's call them the Brahmin left. I think that's how, what she said. The Brahmin left. Can you speak more about the upper echelon of of the PMCs? Um, yeah, sure. um, and, then, and then also that last part um, about the Democrats not representing Democrats or Republicans, by the way, not representing the working class. Can you speak to both of those points? I, I will, um, but I do just want to emphasize one thing, Jay. You know, I totally agree with you about aggressively um, advocating for ne- supporting neither party at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm totally with you on that. I know that it's not necessarily like popular on all levels of left, but I don't really care anymore. I just want to say that I feel like working class people have been in an abusive relationship with the Democratic Party. And it's Please, time to just like You're quit preaching. that, Preach. <laughs> quit that abusive relationship because you keep hoping that your partner will change. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're not changing. And, and the they're, sooner they're, we realize that, the better. Yeah. The only thing about that, that is great. Like, Go ahead. You guys, they, Go ahead. they say, like, when asked why they decided to fund the police more despite the protests, they said because we ran on it and they voted for us. So they will use your support against you guys yeah, because yeah. they use your yeah. support as a yeah. mandate. That is a great point that Nick's uh Nick makes about like you know how they say, Oh, vote for the lesser of two. We know you don't really want them, but then they get in and they go, Oh, we're gonna fund the police. That's our mandate. You voted us in. They forget all about how you just voted for the lesser of two evil, and they forget all about that. And they start saying you have a mandate. That's why they're funding the police state right now. That's killing us, literally. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, no, I'm, man, I'm just thinking, like, (laughs) all this shit is just so fucked up, and all these people, man, that's why, I don't know, I, it's too much, man, you both saying the two songs, I never got, I never got the DM about the two songs, you DM me, I saw the DM about the two songs, you know what, you know what, if you didn't get it, if you don't follow him, maybe it's in, like, one of them other inboxes, Oh, that you right. have to oh, go to yeah, yeah. you gotta go to a special inbox to yeah. it's not in your regular inbox if you're not following the person. Maybe that's what they're 
that's the part that they're missing from uh telling you what's going on because it sounds like that's what's what's happening to to but me. I'm I'm just saying like yes, we we do have to get people out of these parties, bro. Like all all of it, just bag back. All you voters, all you people who want to run, just bag back, man, and create create something, bro. Create some type of movement, some type of organization before build a stronghold and build your power before you go and ask for theirs, right? You got to come with, to the table with something if you don't, you know, you're going to come empty handed. So you got to, <laughs> you got to know what you're going in for. We can't just go into this government knowing that it's a fascist system, thinking that little old you can, little old you from the fucking projects, wherever the fuck your ass from can make some change after all these uh, uh, generations and centuries of fucking of murdering people in, uh, in war. 270 years. We only alive 240 years we've been at war. That ain't, you can't, you can't undo that. You can't undo that. And I wouldn't even believe you if you told me you could. I wouldn't even believe me if you showed me a, a well fucking planned out, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, I used to get there. I don't believe you. It's going to take time. The revolution is going to take time. And we're going to have to really build our infrastructure before we go and, and thinking that you can just change something in these fucking parties or maybe these people will listen to you one day. And this oh, uh, this is why I said that the progressive wing, even though that don't make any sense because it's a fucking bird, the progressive <laughs> wing is it, that, uh, that, that victim that the abuser let outside. You know, she uh, they they get to go to the store. You know, they even hold hands sometimes. They go on dates, but she's still a victim. She's still getting locked in a room when she, you know, what I'm saying, get too uppity. You know, and sometimes they bring you back down to remind you. So when George Floyd got his got his neck nailed on, and Breonna Taylor got shot, and they fund the police, they was telling you this, <laughs> like. Yeah, you might be what their prior what their priorities are. Yeah. So um, let's let's add to the list of hero worshiping because it's not just the people you see on the graphic. I put them on there because they're the top two people. AOC and I'll show the graphic right now just to remind people. Um, AOC and Bernie Sanders are the top two people that receive hero worship by far, like by far, far. Um, and then AOC, AOC stands are the ones that are out like piranhas to attack ready to attack with any like uh like like any sort of uh critique almost any sort of critique of uh AOC they find a way to rationalize it but it's not just those two it's people I like one of my one of my followers racist <laughs> I was like you know what I'm gonna let him dabble this out let me see how I go <laughs> uh, that's, that's their business but <laughs> let's listen to Jamal what happened to Jamal Bowman in public and we'll speak about how this is connected to hero worshiping. We could do more on climate. We could do more on lowering prescription drug costs. We could do more on gun control. We could do more with regard to the black agenda. We can do more. Congressman, and you're a hypocrite because you are funding neo-Nazis in Ukraine. They are wearing the Ukrainian, they are wearing the black sun symbol, the same symbol that the Buffalo shooter used. The same symbol that the guy, that the person who almost killed the vice president in Argentina used. Thank you, you so much. You say you want to advance the black cause, but you are funding the same people who who kill in the name of white supremacy. This okay, is the this is the, the foundation. For the this is oh, the foundation of our democracy, God. freedom of speech. Not Stick around and I will have a conversation with you right after the end. But let me get to the conclusion. Stick around. I that was freaking disgusting. Okay, his response no, no, to that. No, no, no. Yeah, his response to that is it's democracy. See, freedom of speech. But the point in the house is to me illustrates. If it was a the democracy, danger. I would have had word of you sending my fucking money over the fucking neo yeah, Exactly. You have you would have you have say so over it, and we don't. Because if you think we would fund people, fund send money to war manufacturers instead of funding the block, it, it would be a different story. But that's how the can you say why free speech? You Americans piss me off. All even even some of you, some of you that fall for that shit, ain't no free speech. 
Dude, they are censoring us today. They just censored some of you guys' favorite podcasters. They they already censored uh, uh, RT. It's not because they they care about you. It's because they care about their image. We are if we are calling out America for what it is here. Think about the information that people in Yemen have. Think about if we can talk to the people of North Korea. Think about if we can talk to the people of China. Think about if they ain't have those fucking firewalls up. This is the fucking land of censorship. Ain't no fucking freedom of speech here. Because you know what? The FBI done came to my ass multiple times just because I say shit that I, that I feel. They came to me. So is that not... Like, what the fuck? You come to me? I thought I had freedom of speech. I ain't doing... I ain't, I ain't did no actions on, on, on those words. When when have I showed that I was a threat to anyone? But they they will pick on me, but they ain't gonna pick on on a, on a real motherfuckers because that's who pay them. But it is what it is. And no, you ain't free. You a fucking slave. And let your ass get locked up for not for being back on child support or some bullshit driving or whatever. They're gonna show you, and they're gonna get that prison slave labor out of your ass. And they're gonna show you how much. How many, how many rights you got left in this motherfucker? You're going to be mm. sitting there counting them bitches on one hand in your cell. They literally have, if you think about it, we literally have a, a you know, 1700, 1800 slave reenactment center. We have that. It's called Angola. We have That's the old slave, slave reenactment center. <laughs> yeah, slave reenactment center. That's what that is. We live That's like in universal one of the oldest studios. constitutions in the world. One of the oldest constitutions in the world that was written by slavers. And people take this to heart. That's why I don't, these people, oh, I stand for the U.S. Constitution. I stand, what, what? <laughs> you talking about the Constitution that they had to fucking revamp some amendments just to redo fucking slavery? Get the fuck out right. of here. Yeah, let me read this comment. Biden is getting his fair share of hero worship and Zelensky, too. And this yeah. feeds into all of what we're saying, Alex, about hero worship and how it's dangerous and how it feeds politicians bad behavior. Because if they do bad things like vote for NATO and you don't critique them, guess what they're going to do? They're going to vote for Ukraine then money. You see, you see how that works? Like if there's no pushback from the people who are on your side of policy when they see you not working the policy. If we out with our homies, Rome, if we out in the hood with the homies, Rome, Rome, and he's stepping out of the policy of the homies, yeah, whatever that policy is, yeah. he gonna Where get checked going? immediately. Yeah. He gonna get checked immediately. You understand what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean that's not love necessarily. Yeah. But they they just want to be have this. They want to have access. And when I'm talking about media, they want to have access. But the problem is the followers, like regular people, just the people on Twitter, they take they follow what those people in media do. Yes. Oh, they say don't critique them. They don't understand. They're not critiquing them because they want access for their shows. You can critique them. But you critiquing them makes them look bad. The people, you see how it's a circle, Rome? It's a circle that it's like when we critique them, they take it personal because it is like we're critiquing them. Yeah. If they're saying AOC and Bernie Sanders is great, and we were like, them niggas is garbage. <laughs> you see, you see how it's like they get offended. <laughs> you see how they get offended? <laughs> if you had some new J's on, you like nigga, this was fresh. I'm like, nigga, this is garbage, nigga. I <laughs> <years ago." laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, so they say they're taking it personal, man. They're taking it personal. And I can't say that I wouldn't if I was in their position, but it is what it is. The critique is accurate. We have them funding NATO, funding the imperialist core. And why, you, why you, was NATO like people always trying to get this, uh, trying to paint NATO as some type of, you know, a uh, cousin to America, some savior? No. Why was NATO put together? Who was the heads of NATO? Name them. Name them. Who do these people worship? Name them. Don't just say NATO like it's just some group. No, that's why we call ourselves Marxist Leninists. If we're going to call ourselves communists because we know where the teachings came from, where do, who, who put NATO together? Why was NATO put together? To take down what? Who? To establish what? Okay. 
white supremacy, to take down communism, to take down socialism. They have been raising war on fucking black and brown communities. I mean, black and brown countries since they have been established. Why would you? Why are you standing for them? How can? How can you? What the fuck? I can't back no shit up like that. I can't even. I can't even pull none out the hat to say, well, they did it because, well, damn, it's not midterm. It's not voting time. They didn't compromise on anything. They just gave billions of dollars away to fucking Nazis. Billions of dollars away that would have gave you health care. Enough money that would have gave you guys health care and your children free lunch. They just sent it off. Didn't even say, didn't have anything to say. They, at least Bernie Sanders used to be like this back in the 90s. This is horrendous. We are sending millions of dollars out to another racist country when our children here starve today. At least we used to get that. These motherfuckers just don't care no more. And we got this fucking milk dud head ass motherfucking Jamal Bowman talking about, you know what I'm like, man? I wish I was there with a through a shoe ass punk ass. <laughs> you on mute, bro. Oh, my bad. I said he's pretty. I just said he's pretty terrible, man. It's 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 he's terrible. But let, let me let me bring this clip of J. Cole, rapper J. Cole, and he spits a little truth here about minimum wage about what we're paid per hour. And I'm making the connection to how they just laid down for the minimum wage fight. They said, oh, parliamentarian, and they just kind of withered away to the side. There was no pushback. They didn't mount any sort of protest. They didn't mount any sort of movement. So what does that say when the PMC class, do you think the $15 minimum wage legislation affects them? They're all being paid good. You see how, it, it, you see how, it, you see how hero worshiping standing on what the professional managerial class wants to do never trickles down to the lower, the people at the pole, at the bottom of the a podium. And that's who J. Cole is speaking about here about what is, what is your time worth? Now the squad progressives, AOC, what pushback that they give about this $15 minute parliamentarian and the shenanigans that went, went around, not including the $15 minimum wage. A million, gotta get ten, got ten, gotta get a hundred, mm -hmm. got a hundred, gotta get five, got five, gotta get a billion. If it's cars, you never have enough cars. If it's women, you never have enough. You'll be chasing them forever. If it's success, you can never get enough of that. I so I mean he makes a lot of good points in here, but to this first point, Rome, like we're on a plantation. You have to do it to survive. This is why they create conditions like this. This is why the Fed chair is raising rates crazy. Raising these base point rate, like raising them crazy. It's not to affect them. It's to it's to suppress the wages of the worker. It's to suppress it, it, employment. It's song? to make us feel it. Go ahead, Ron. Uh, people make the world go round. He, uh, I think that's that song. He said, uh, 
The workers are striking, saying they need more, uh, better fare so they can help pollute the air. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you see, we all we all on that plantation, but if it's, it's up to us to stay on this hamster wheel of, okay, I can either work this shitty job, all, work this shitty way all my life, you know what I'm saying, and just die or sell my people out and make it or liberate my people and make it with my people. We got to stop thinking in, uh, with the individual mindset of getting a million dollars. It's not about getting a million dollars, five million dollars. It's about where that money comes from. Because then that's where your morals come into play. Because if you can, if I can make a million dollars out of my trunk, I probably can make five million dollars out of my trunk. So somebody else might come along and say, hey, wrong. Hey, how much you spend making those, making your CDs and et cetera, et cetera? I probably spend about fifty thousand dollars. Oh man, man, we got farms, we got this and that. Give me this, you know what I'm saying? Give me ten thousand dollars, we can get you popping. But it's child labor and it's, it's slave labor and it's low wages and it's people working and working hours on end just to get your name out there, and they're not getting their their uh, their fair share. You can't, it, it's not about, <clears throat> what What does success mean? What is luxury? What is luxury, right? Ask yourself that before you try to go and, and, and you know what I'm saying, call yourself, because every time you think you're successful, there's some other nigga with a bigger house, some other nigga with more cars, some other motherfucker with, with prettier, prettier women. It's always going to be somebody like that, and then you're going to, it's a it's a it's a uh it's a slippery scope. Don't 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 go at this with this uh don't come in don't come in this shit with the uh with the mindset of getting rich or getting getting rich for your people. It's all about bailing out your people, getting your people out of the situation that they are in all together. You know what I'm saying? We don't throw down the ladder, we build the ladder, we don't throw down the rope, we tie, you know what I'm saying, shit together and make a rope, and we all pull each other up together, we all help each other up. That's the only way it's gonna make it, cause guess what's gonna happen if a motherfucker come become successful? Y'all, I pull my, y'all help me build this fucking rope. I pull myself up. This nigga at the top, like, hey, you might want to cut that rope, cause the motherfucker shy see at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? We do it different up here, and that's where you get that attitude of mm -hmm. your celebrities coming from the hood, and they never come back, or they turn their back, they turn it back on the people. That's a. Uh... That's uh that's facts, but but and also to what um to that point, it's about it's capitalist conditioning and it just bleeds into all of our lives. It's the it's, it's the it's the necessity to chase the dollar just to survive. Yeah. And you have the concept and you apply that just to, to everything. You you gotta have this, you gotta have more. You gotta have this, you gotta have more. Yeah. That is capitalism conditioning. Because you would have a whole different reality if you grew up in a socialist sort of conditioning, a communist sort of conditioning, where you don't you're not looking at I have to have the true. best. You're you're looking at everybody has to have the best. You're not looking yeah. at I have to have the best. You're looking at to your point, everybody has to have the best. That's what you're looking at. So it's just a completely different concept. But I think what Jay Cole it, it, was explaining like how, was that. How we look at socialism, how we look at life itself, right? And we explain so how we how we explain socialism to people on simple terms is everybody should have the basics, right? The basics, and we shouldn't have to pay to live. That's the easiest way to put it. But socialism <laughs> is humanitarian, you know, and uh, uh, a lot of people like to shy away from it. This is why I always push socialism. I push communism. I push socialism in people's faces. That's you know what I'm saying? That have been uh, pushed propaganda against uh, against us. You know what I'm saying? They be pushed all this. Uh, they've been drowning this propaganda of anti-communism, anti-socialism, so they can see socialism in real time. They can't retreat. They can't rebuttal me because I'm out here doing a damn thing. I done fed their community. I'm feeding their community. What you gonna say? You you already agree with all my policies. You already agree with everything I already did. Until I said I was a communist. You see how they get us? And you already agree with me that the media already pushes our us apart. Why why you think they they why you think they push so much anti-communism in your head? 
There's a reason. They didn't say, oh, well, being a fucking, uh, uh, being a capitalist is just as bad as being a communist. No, they say being a communist is just as bad as being a Nazi. Wow. The same people that took out the fucking Nazis. You see how they, these people are brainwashed, bro. <laughs> It's gonna, we're that's gonna, all, we're gonna that's a good um so back to the or not back because we're we're all we're, uh we're talking about here worship but just refocusing to coalition building of this conversation because let's show this video of the Black Panthers and the Young Patriots, and then I'm gonna have a question uh, in the context of if if we if we were to apply that to, to today and what some reformists are doing. Are these apologists for these politicians? Uh, these this hero worshiping that's going on. So let's let's play the video, then we'll talk about it after. Went to this uh, community meeting with the joint organization. Panthers are here. Are here. Panthers are here. Yeah. Twelve times. Okay. We come here at our house when you catch the supervise us where we can be of help to you. What do you want in your community? What do you want here? Is you, are you afraid of pain? You want to take berets off now or, or what? Man? There were a lot of suspicions about the Black Panthers uh, that they were gun carrying terrorists. It was a scenario that I had never been in before. I see some guys with Confederate flag patches. I was a little concerned. The thing we got to deal with is concept of poverty, man. We got to get rich color things. See, <clears throat> there was enough fit for dogs to live in, but humans having to pay $144 a month for the thing. They sold their sales building off the new ownership. What we need is understanding among the people, coalition between the people to stick together and take them owners and put them over here in the lake somewhere. Right on. <laughs> Once you realize, man, that your house is funky with rats and roaches, you know, same way a black dude's house is, you know, once you realize that, that your brother's been brutalized by the cop, the same way the west side and south side is, you know, once you realize that you are paying taxes, right. taxes for the cops to whoop your ass, you're paying them, yeah. and you're paying them to kill you, you deal from there. The same thing happened on the south Bob side. Lee turned out to be quite an organizer. And he says, yeah, my name is Bobby Lee, but my real name is Robert E. Lee. <laughs> and we all laughed. We said, you got to be kidding me. Who, who's here that want to see this thing move? Yeah, man. Right on. Well, the first thing we talk about now is how we're going to organize. You know, where are we going to organize? And, you know, we're all going to get run out of here eventually. That was a good meeting. It was. It got everybody. It got everybody riled up. Yeah. So, I, I'm showing this to show and to ask this question now. Getting back to the topic of of hero worshiping, not back to it, but zero in on this part. Let's say, let's put this in the context of the Young Patriots and the Black Panthers. Let's say they coalition build, right, and they've agreed on, you know, things to, to try to accomplish. And then somehow that their stance on certain things somehow becomes different, somehow becomes uh, opposite of what the original agreement is talking about. And I'm specifically talking about the anti-war part and how now it's somehow different that is acceptable for people like uh, Sanders and AOC to... Uh, vote to fund NATO and Ukraine, um, and how hero worshiping uh, allows this. So, yeah, yeah. go it's, ahead. It, it, it's dangerous, and I, and I love that he had brung up that you know what I'm saying the police. You paying the police to, bring, to beat uh, your ass? Because <clears throat> I was just talking to one of my wealthy followers. He's a, he's 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 older, very wealthy, and um, he beat himself up for it. But he wasn't no you know, a uh, uh, trust fund baby, you know, he got it out the mud and I was telling him, it's not about, you know, uh, feeling bad about yourself. It's about, you know, uh, you, you only should feel bad when you're not doing everything that you can to bring people up to your status. And uh, uh, we was discussing the police 
and why why uh people people in his class should be against the police if you are white and you are in a different tax bracket than us and you know what i mean you are paying for the deaths of black bodies no matter how we no matter how we look at this no matter how you, i have asked them how many black bodies do you think your taxes pay for so you guys should be the first ones up in arms when the police is out here acting like cowboys Firing their gun and everything that's moving. We just seen them shoot another young man that was eating a hamburger yeah. in his fucking car. This is ridiculous. And we're going to have to build coalitions, but people are going to have to cross their class lines, like we said earlier. They're going to have to come to us because we are the ones that need liberation. Our people are the ones that need liberating. And they have more than enough to lose. We have lost it all. Some of us have lost our friends because it is because of our stands, because we call ourselves socialist communists. So it's time for them to take those L's for us to have a better life. And I, I say that, uh, uh, like I like I tell Americans, when we are speaking to, uh, when we are speaking about Yemen, if we want to stop the war on Yemen, we got to stop the war here. We got to stop them, these people here, right? So if you love the people of uh, uh, Yemen, you love the people of, of, of Palestine, if you want the wars to stop, you only can stop a violent person by sniping them out. How can you stop a hawk that's on roids? <laughs> like another hawk that's on roids or some weapon <laughs> that can stop them and put him down for good? How can you play nice with something that doesn't have a conscience? How can you how can you negotiate with your enemy? That is a uh, great um, point. I do want to interject at this point. This this article is an older article, but I want to kind of zero in on this next point, which is there's a lot to critique that we have legitimate critiques for, for some of these people that they're hero, -worship, hero worshiping and shielding. There's a lot to critique. It's not like these are small things is the point that I'm saying wrong. These are huge things. What could be bigger than voting for NATO, voting for Israel, uh, apartheid state of Israel? That. They already did that. That's what I'm saying. Like what Like what could be bigger, but- How, how can they call, how, how, how is it fair? That we are held to a higher standard than politicians were, than a, more power than some 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 world leaders in the continent of Africa, in China. How can we? How 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 is we held to a higher standard than these people? How can they still have the title of a leftist, of a socialist? But we are labeled grifters or larpers or whatever the fuck. Right. That's such a good point. We're not leading our people. We're, we're not leading our people to to some to some other party. RBN haven't led our people to any other party. RBN is trying to lead our people to revolution to to liberation. So, and if we want to get to definitions of things like <clears throat> Bernie Sanders is a grifter, AOC is a grifter. These people are, you know, what I'm saying, literally gr grifting off of your your pain and your misery. Yes, and making the fucking. Making a career off of it. I can't make a career off of this. If I do, it wouldn't be it won't be for long. And we know this. We know I don't have long in this game, especially doing this shit. You think the FBI are gonna keep letting me travel around? They would rather shoot a plane down full of Americans to let me live and go speak about some goddamn black power and death to America. I know my goddamn right. fate. <laughs> That's the type of people we're dealing with. But those people, the, the progressive strategy, Rome, is that those people that you're describing, Rome, we can convince them for 15 fifteen dollar minimum wage, right? Like that's that's what we're doing. Like it's it's so unserious. But let me read the first couple of paragraphs of this, because you you gonna have a lot to say, Rome, about this. So Sanders endorses Biden. The political revolution that never was. This is by uh, a couple uh, S E S E P candidate for U.S. president. Um, 
Joseph. Oh, I'm sorry, Joseph Kishore. So let's read on uh, now. Just understand this is from 2020. So on Monday afternoon, Bernie Sanders ended his second presidential campaign, not with the big bang, but a whimper. The Ver the Vermont senator formally endorsed Joe Biden in a live stream discussion on the COVID, uh, uh, the coronavirus pandemic. The event was a groveling display on the part of Sanders, who did not make a single criticism of Biden. The single theme of Sanders' remarks was the call for unity. The imperative, he said, is for all of us to work together to do what has to be done, not only in this moment, but beyond. The unity that Sanders is calling for is a unity of political establishment, representing the ruling class against the opposition from below. The social anger among workers and youth to the response of the ruling class to the coronavirus pandemic threatens revolutionary upheavals. Under these conditions, Sanders issued what amounted to a call for national unity, a national unity government around Biden. Quote, Today, I am asking all Americans, I am asking every Democrat, I'm asking every independent, I'm asking a lot of Republicans to come together in this campaign to support your candidate, which I endorse. The two jointly announced a, a, number, of ta a, a number of task force to unite their campaigns and provide Sanders with the... Uh, Th uh, threadbare uh, fiction that he is influencing the program of the Democratic Party and pushing it to the left. And this, this is the last paragraph here before we discuss. Sanders and Biden heap praise upon each other and stress that there is little that separates them politically. Remember that. There is little that separates them politically. Biden said that People are going to be surprised that we are a part of some issues, but we are awfully close on a bunch of others. Reading from the same script, Sanders directed the conversation to, quote, some of the areas that I think we are actually fairly close. Later, he conceded that he and Biden may disagree a little. So, Rome, I, I read this part, and I'm going to read a little more of this, because... The political revolution that could have been, Bernie Sanders just threw that away. And he didn't mobilize anything. Um, so you see how to deify a person like that, that would throw away a revolution. He didn't spin it off into a third party. He didn't even say, hey, let's continue. It's almost like he had to run away in shame because he was saying, support Biden. Like, he couldn't come back to the revolution. Oh, no. He couldn't... He he wasn't welcome back in the hood. He couldn't come <laughs> back. So, this just adds to the point that there's a lot to critique on Bernie Sanders and AOC. So, to me, it doesn't make sense to be so defensive about these people. It doesn't make sense when they're doing NATO votes, when they're support doing the Iron Dome, when they're supporting Ukraine, when they're supporting all these matters. That All this money they're sending away to Ukraine, Rome, that's our money. That's working class money that's not going to us. Your thoughts, uh, Rome, on any part of that? I'm going to throw some comments up here, though, I, as, I you're, feel like, as you're speaking. I feel like uh, Bernie Sanders is, is, is doing what he's told. You know, he's doing what he's told. And like I, I seen that it wasn't no political revolution, even when I was working for him. You know, when we had, you know, what I'm saying, talked to him a couple of times, and I seen that this shit ain't going nowhere because you, if you, if you don't take a revolution as serious of, as a revolution would take itself, then you ain't really about this. And I seen that it was all, you know, uh, just buzzwords, just to make, you know, what I'm saying, just to get people up. It was edgy at the time. It was, you know, what I'm saying, it was badass. I'm gonna fight the Democratic party i'm gonna fight the republican party but has he fought he hasn't fought in any of them he actually have been bipartisan on many bills since uh he had got a uh promotion right ever since he got his promotion he has been chilling he barely been in the office 
preaching to nobody. Yeah. Why isn't he in the streets? Why isn't he crisscrossing the country trying to mobilize for these things he's saying? He's busy. He's happen? busy. But when he was, man, this nigga been in the office since we, before we was born. So don't give me that he has something to do type shit. These motherfuckers don't do work like, they don't work no nine to five like us. They come and vote on a couple of things for an hour or two and get the fuck on. And probably vote for a goddamn uh, uh, vacation or another fucking pay raise. In the middle of a pandemic, when they denied you stimulus, they got themselves a raise. AOC voted for that. So why shouldn't we critique her on that? Mitch McConnell voted for it. Oh, we can we can talk about him, but we can't talk about her. Make that make sense. You don't see how you are, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> playing their game, man. You're playing their game. And maybe, maybe a lot of you know. A lot of you know that you don't have no identity outside of Bernie Sanders and AOC. You're gonna lose followers if you start critiquing yeah. her. You're gonna, you're gonna yeah. be called names. You're gonna be on our side. You're gonna be called a Jimmy Dore, fucking whatever the fuck they call them niggas. But yeah. You're going to lose your identity. You're going to lose your fucking, your platform. And you selling the people out just as much as AOC is selling the people out. Because when you withhold information from the proletarian in the, in the time, in times like this, when censorship is so rapid, when you're holding back information from people that don't know any better, when people come and critique us on Twitter and they don't know that these people voted for these wars, they don't know they voted for these bills and we shit and we share articles to these people and they... And it blows their fucking mind. You are doing them a disservice. You are doing your people a disservice. And you should be displatformed. But I know that will never happen because y'all niggas ain't nothing but CNN light. Sam Cedar, Kyle Kalinske, all the motherfuckers. You think they'd be where they was at if they was pushing back on, on the Democratic Party the way we were? Fuck no. No. Not happening. Maybe if they was calling themselves Republicans. Independents? No. But there's a reason why they're there. It's a reason why they got a fucking pla is is the reason why they got the platform that they that they do right now. Kyle Kalinsky was going through all that bullshit when he was getting uh when he was getting shadow banned. You ain't hear shit about that since then. Right? Since he started going with those corporate motherfuckers. All these motherfuckers sell out. Uh, um, let me read a little bit of this article here. AOC. For Ocasio Cortez, Sanders, and the DLC vote for war. So, if they vote for war, and then what does that say about you that's telling people to go vote for the people that's voting? I support white for supremacy. War. I support. I support U.S. hegemony. I support. I, I support it all. That's what it says. Because if you're looking at their track record, if you're looking at their voter record when it comes to foreign policy, Democrats and progressive Democrats have the same fucking record. And we're not going to I'm not saying like they 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 are new faces, but they have blood on their hands. They have been around long enough. Right. <laughs> to imperialist kill, adjacent. Kill imperialist yes. adjacent. <laughs> yes. They have been yeah. around for a while now. It's time. It's time to call them out for what they are. Because if we haven't seen anything change for real, go to these people districts. What you're going to see is gentrification. Is that the change that the people ask for? So imperialist adjacent, it speaks to the, the uh, hero worshiping too. Because the hero worshiping Rome is what, what's allowing progressive left-leaning people to be currently imperialist adjacent like AOC like Bernie Sanders you see how earlier I said hero worshiping feeds bad behavior it feeds it because if you don't critique them sharply adversarially publicly shame them all they're gonna do is go okay that's a sweat off my brow. Y'all didn't come after me. So the next time I have to do something terrible, I keep, because this is what progressives say. I got to make all these terrible deals so I can get these little crumbs. 
And what crumbs? That's what that's the deal they're they're they've made. Rome, go ahead. What, what what crumbs have they delivered to the table? That that Biden haven't snatched off already. He gave you guys crumbs with the fucking ten thousand dollars of your fucking student loan debt. He said, you know what? Never mind. I need a couple of you motherfuckers getting out. I, I, I talked to my buddies. They said they didn't like that. They gave me some more money and I changed my mind because they gave me some more change. And what happens? Like, come on, man. <laughs> y'all no, killing y'all sales at this point. Y'all killing y'all sales. And we just like, why? Hey, stop. And you're just like, you can't tell me what to do. I can, I can do what the <laughs> fuck I I can do what the <laughs> fuck I <laughs> Right. <laughs> Another. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with you? Great, great analogy. <laughs> I'm trying to save you. We're trying to save you. You think this shit that we doing is going to make our lives better? I live my life in paranoia. <laughs> my family lived their life in paranoia because of the shit that I say. This shit don't make our lives better. It just gets you the information that you needed. But you fighting us because we got the information that you needed because we got it. We said it before your fucking before your leader said it. But let five, 10 years go down the line and all these people suddenly are feeling bad for their fucking votes in the war like Bernie Sanders did when he voted for fucking war in Afghanistan. I apologize. I'm so sorry, but I know them sorry ain't gonna bring back the million children that we killed. Yeah, yeah, them sorry, them sorries ain't gonna bring back them bodies, nigga. They ain't gonna bring them back. And to your point, this war vote, how many bodies from this war vote that they're gonna have on their conscience or their kill list? Let's read in the history of socialist movements, parties and political figures are defined above all by their attitude towards imperialist war. I'm going to say that shit again. In the history of socialist movement, parties and political figures are defined above all by their attitude towards imperialist war. On June 16, 1918, Socialist Party leader Eugene V. Debs was arrested in jail for a speech opposing the U.S. government involvement in World War, in World War I. Speaking to a large crowd in a park in Canton, Ohio, Debs called the war an imperialist war and denounced the Democratic administration of Woodrow Wilson and the capitalist government of Europe for waging it. For waging it. And here's a quote from, from uh, Eugene Debs. Every solitary one of these aristocratic conspirators and would-be murderers claim to be an arch patriot, <laughs> Debs declared. Every one of them insists that the war is being waged to make the world safe for democracy. What humbug, what rot, what false pretense. I mean, couldn't you... I'm going to stop there. That quote... He could have said this shit today and I would have been like... I was just about to say that. He would have He would have said this shit today and went viral on Twitter. Uh, yes. Yes, that is accurate. Literally, as we speak right now, that's the same thing I was going to say. But let's let's continue. On May 18th, every single Democratic Socialist American, a Democratic Socialist of America backed member of Congress voted to approve Joe Biden's request for a 40 for 40 billion in military and financial aid for Ukraine. All of that money went to weapons manufacturers. Bernie Sanders, who once published recordings of him reading that very thing, Rome, that I just said, that speech that I just read from, he recorded that, voted yes for war, war credits, and said, we, this is Bernie Sanders now, quote, we should always have a debate, but the problem is that Ukraine is in the middle of very intense war right now. I think I think every day counts, and I think we have to respond as strongly and vigorously as we can. What are you going to say, Ron? Go ahead. If you want to respond strongly, then, dog, you could have called out America for fucking trying to wage war on Russia for fucking years now. Explain the sanctions on Russia before the war. Were we not trying to, what, what are we doing with Russia? We had sanctions on them before we was here. Why? 
Why are we waging, you know, trade wars against Russia? If we do not want war, what is the goal? You can't tell me that these people are just setting up NATO bases around uh, around Russia because these are cool spots and all the fucking cool kids hang out there. If I see all my niggas, like, if I see all my enemies move on my block, I would think I'm being set up. Bernie Sanders, if you had any dignity you will call out America for what it is doing, for what it has done to Europe, to Russia. You have, you will have the balls to call out these people, but you will never will. Because what have made you your money is playing defense. What made your career is playing is playing defense. The both sides of the argument. He did the same shit with Palestinians. I'm tired of his fucking ass, man. I'm tired of his ass, and he supposed to stand up. He supposed to be a Jew. But you can't stand up for your brothers and sisters. You playing both sides with people's lives. And that's where we just don't fucking connect that. This is where I cross the line at. We might talk shit. We all talk shit. We all talk spicy about this and that. But nobody actually want people to die in war. I don't want anybody else, anybody to die in war besides our, our oppressors. They should be the ones out there fighting them down wars. World leaders should be out boxing each other or shooting at each other if it's that deep. Not us. We should have to sacrifice our brothers, our sisters, our family members, our sons and daughters to this military. For what? Democracy? The same democracy you have... The only reason why your child is getting college now is because they're going to the military, not democracy. Stop it. Really think about why we are here. Go back. And even if history scares you, learn from it. Learn from it or you relive it. Because neoliberalism have gave us this exact same thing. When Hitler came to power, who was the ones funding him? America, 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 the U.S., we were the ones putting that man in, in positions of power that he would have never be able to reach by himself. And just Germany. Our corporations to our government. Industries, Ford. We have birthed, neo, we have birthed Nazis. And you telling me that you're not going to take care of your child? <laughs> this is the this is the only child that America is proud of. Cuz they are willing to go out there and kill the people that they want dead. They are go they are they are willing to go out there and invade the countries that they want invaded. It's funny how they talk about Russia invading Ukraine but never talk about the CIA invading indigenous lands in America itself. Preach. That's it, man. Um, so this article, that's preaching right there. Um, it also says where that money goes. So it's not so it's not going to the workers of Ukraine. So let's see where the money's going. Okay. Because if you want if you want to you don't want to, you're not clear that what their vote is doing, let's let's cover it right here. According to a House Appropriations Committee summary of the legislation, Ocasio-Cortez, Sanders, and the DSA have cast their votes for the following. Six billion to pay the salaries of the Ukrainian military. Go ahead. Including oh, no, no. its its fascist uh, Azov battalion. I see you reading it. Um, And then let's go to the next ticking point there, or the next bullet point. 9.05 billion to replenish US weapons deployed to the Ukrainian military. What could we have done wrong with 9.05 billion here? This is where See, look, again I wouldn't have to I wouldn't have to take time off for my family, for my kids, and my woman to go to fucking Jacksonville. 
I'm going to go to Jackson, Mississippi and pass out clean water. I know that much. I know we could have redid the pipelines and they're in Flint. Well, all the money that they didn't gave out, we could have did so much work on infrastructure. We could have damn near built a train in, in America. But they would rather keep their uh their uh, uh their arm their, their iron fist down on the neck of other countries than to take care of their own. And this is why I don't call for anything else but revolution. What else? Are, what else is you going to get out of this? What are you doing this for? Who are you doing this for? Because we have plenty of examples of people going into the Democratic Party and selling out. We have no examples of people going into the Democratic Party and turning it on his fucking ass. Like you guys claim you can. But I have many examples of my people going out there and fighting for what's right and getting that shit that night. Because they are willing to live and die because this is their life. We already lost everything. What else you want? I'm working $7 an hour, 40 hours a week. My kids can't eat. The lights is cut off. I can't pay my fucking car note. I'm hiding that bitch in the garage because they bought the repo. About to be evicted. My water ain't clean. What else can you take from me? I know what I can take from you because you got it all. You got it all. You done made your career off of my pain. Like this some kind of fucking... You know, oh, them, them uh, uh, feed the children. They, these these yeah, progressive. Commercial. Yes, that's how they treat us, bro. Well, look at these communities, and we got to do better, and we're going to do better for them. And what always happens with them feed the children uh, corporations? They always get outed because they're all capitalists and always hold the money at the fucking top. And that's exactly what they're doing. Ain't no, man, if they, if they had any fucking dignity, these people wouldn't be built millionaires today holding office Talking shit about other rich people. Talking shit about the people that you vote as a block with. To vote for wars. To vote to fund Israel. Where do you guys draw the line? When, when, are, when are you not a socialist anymore? When are you not a communist anymore? When you are literally, you are bombing communist nations. Socialist nations. You are throwing CIA, you are funding CIA coups. Any socialist nations, when is it that you get your you get stripped of your title and be caught what you are? A war criminal, a fascist, and a, a white supremacist enabler. Because that's what you are. Stop playing footsies with these politicians. Because when you play footsies, you get yours caught in a bear trap. idiots i need a fucking cigarette i'll be right back do you do you uh let me continue it's upsetting like and this and the the anger you hear frustration you hear in rome's voice is connected to how you wish you could team up with some people that claim to have the similar policy beliefs but this hero worshiping is prevent is preventing any sort of uh any sort of short-term uh, targeted sort of uh, 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 coalition building, not even long-term, because they're not they're they're not about tearing down the system. I'm talking about targeted. Um, let me toss up some some uh, super chats because they're uh, starting to pack up. I haven't announced them. Thank you for your super chat, JM. Let me go to another one. I put them up there, but I didn't say anything. Sean Miller. Thank you for your super chat. I think JM again. Um, and then Justin just now. Preach Rome, you're doing so much good in the world. RBN is doing the damn thing. Congrats on the recent award. Yes, she's talking about Savvy got top. Is it streamer or podcaster or some media person? Maybe it's not. I don't think it's podcaster. I forget the label. It was, uh, it was women in media. Women in media. And then we got networking media or something whatever the network thing is uh oh, we won we won yeah oh yeah. shit oh no no wait wait so she got two she got two she got a she got maybe hers was women in media and then the other one was top 
streamer or a top show, top political show. I'm talking about that. So not oh, the one man. where she got the individual. Yeah, she got two different awards. We got one. So hey, nigga, so we be nigga. Damn. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, let's let's get back to uh the art. Oh, actually, let me make sure there was no other super chats here because I did uh, switch screens. I don't. Yeah, that was the last one. All right, so let's. Let me just re continue to read this list here. And this is what AOC Sanders and a DLC DSA cast their votes for. 3.9 billion for mis mission support and intelligence support to deploy additional US equipment. You see weapons manufacturers hidden. Equipment to uh Eastern Europe including a Patriot missile. This is a Patriot missile. Oh, shit. 600 million for faster missile production. That's weapons manufacturer. 500 million to procure critical uh, munitions mon mon to increase the stock of Department of Defense. 4 billion to build up, build and update the military capacity of NATO powers in U uh, Eastern Europe. 200 million to update the U.S. In uh, uh, embassy in Kiev. 400 million to fund the Ukrainian police. So they're not only funding the police here, they're funding the police in Ukraine. And that's where our money is going. You see how hero worshiping is, is dangerous? You're worshiping these people who keep doing these bad things and look what their bad things are doing. It's this, it's this imperialist adjacent strategy that progressive Democrats have. And these, that that a lot of these professional managerial class, a lot of these reformists uh, aspire to be, or they 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 proclaim to be their strategy. This justice Democrat inside outside strategy. There is no such thing, and they know it. You know it, and a, a lot of our people know it. They just need something to something to hold on to, man. All this shit is faith based anyway. He's just like, please, some please come save me, somebody oh, save me. <laughs> <laughs> It's in all of the movies. It's in all of the Mission Impossibles. Every movie <laughs> Tom, Tom Cruise is in. He's the savior. Like dodging bullets and doing flips in the air and shit. That's how it conditions the American public. Man, Tom Cruise like came in the red zone with that bullshit. He getting, yeah, he getting, yeah. he getting wet. He getting wet the fuck up. Like this, this ain't no movie, y'all. You have to save yourself. I just told you guys last time, there is no law that can set you free. We can overthrow this system right now. We can set communism in stone as a government and settle it all. But nobody can set you free but you. There is no law. There is no man that can give you life, that can give you freedom but yourself. And you have to fight. You have to strive for that because it's all or nothing. What else do you have left? You gonna you gonna give them you gonna give them whatever the little you have left, or you gonna fight to keep it or fight to get more? It's all about what you're fighting for. See, everybody got their own fights. And I was just talking to uh, if you go on my Twitter, I was talking to uh, my driver earlier from the airport, and I was uh, telling people like I was telling him like you know everybody got their own fight. Some people fighting for no, uh, you know, gay rights, trans rights, black rights, this rights, that right. No, if you're gonna fight for one, fight for it all. If you're gonna fight it all, fight for it all. If you're gonna fight it all, fight for it all. Because it's the only way we're gonna be able to liberate every person on every fucking level. Because all we're gonna do, if we fight for one person and we get liberation for this, then we're gonna have another group of people under oppression. We're going to leave people behind, just like how we left behind the indigenous people, just like how the American government left behind the black, uh, the, the, uh, the black generations and locked them away, et cetera, et cetera. We have to liberate everybody and, and give everybody the basics and treat everybody with the same humanity. Everybody deserves the same humanity. And we always say this, treat the janitor with the same respect that you treat the CEO, right? But we wish it was that way. That 
we just don't live that way. What we have to fight and strive to get and teach to get that way. The only way we're going to get that way is by teaching our future generations uh, better, teaching our, our future generations to push it further than what we did. And for, uh, you know, these older, these older heads to be telling you guys to settle down and, you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever the fuck it is, whatever your rhetoric, your rhetoric is. No, I feel like you should go 10 times as hard because we have to set an example for the generations up under us. I don't know about you guys, but I have generations up under me and I'm I'm a father and I got to set an example. If we don't set an example now, the children are going to fall into the, uh, uh, are going to fall, are going to follow the pavement of the Democratic Party, the, the Progressive Party bullshit, et cetera, et cetera. We want our people to have liberation and we want our children to take up in arms uh, of what we have uh, left behind. So, don't just you know wait for the don't wait for the pavement to settle. Walk in walk in the cement while it's still wet. You know, uh, be disruptive, be be rebellious against the system, so people will see the path that you was taking with this. Because if you play the party lines, if you play the lines that they and you say the lines that they give you, are you really making uh, uh, any change? Are you really fighting for revolution, or are you just playing your part? And you know, we really got to fucking, uh, <laughs> I remember this video, we really got to fucking <laughs> set the shit, no, set the shit in stone right here today. What are we fighting for? Is it liberation or is it decorations? Because decoration is just having a whole bunch of black people in the fucking Democratic Party oppressing us, right? So now we have a fucking general, a black general that's, Looking over yeah. the shit that's going over in Africa, right? So this is what you guys want. You guys want decoration over liberation? Because that's what it's going to bring you. If we don't have liberation, then we have nothing. We, we're back. But that's that's what yeah. they want. It's just a, it's a shell representation. Um, now, I bring this video because it's to the point of what's on the screen. Hero worshiping is dangerous. Hero worshiping makes you think you can vote, vote out fascism that that's something possible you can vote out imperialism that goes to the savior mentality it's just absurd but um one of the people that is part of the hero worshiping class that is hero worshipped bernie sanders the squad the progressives marion williamson is another one so Marianne Williamson, because she's hero worship, she can go around saying ridiculous shit like fascism can be voted out. So this guy makes this funny video explaining how ridiculous that is. So let's, they took away my down vote because I down voted her ass. What? Yeah, Twitter took away my down vote. I was down voting the fuck out of politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh let's look. It's a short video under a minute. Sorry, let me turn it down. It's a little loud. No, that nigga said center right. <laughs> if that ain't so it loops. I don't know what it is, bro. <laughs> it loops back. I'm gonna let it play in the background as we talk about it <laughs> in the background with no sound. It's so ridiculous. What did you say he had written on the box? Uh, wrong. I think he said center right. Like, dog, that, that if that's not a Democrat, I don't know what it. I, I, I yeah. have, I'm, I have liberal ideas. I'm very liberal minded. Like, yeah, I bet. Yeah, I fucking bet. The but same the point. <laughs> but the point of the video is saying, no, 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 you don't need anti-fascists. No, 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 you don't need warriors. No, 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 you don't need none of these revolutionary people. You just need to vote these people out, and it feeds to, it feeds into. It feeds into hero worshiping. And because where did these people go? About, 
think about Rome. Think about this though. Think about what you're placing on the person you're voting. You're yeah. voting out fascism. Like <laughs> this one person, this human, is about to just take care of fascism. You're almost creating like hero worshiping <laughs> with that. Go ahead, Rome. You're gonna say something. Where, I just want to know where do these people go? They just disappear. Like that, that's that's what they do in in, in a liberal mind when they cast their vote. Oh, all the fucking MAGA people go away. All the fucking all the proud boys go away. All the interfere. Yeah, all their money. We just block all them the all out. Support them. <laughs> they just disappear. We we did our job. Worship me. <laughs> I did my part. I even got a fucking black. Pick a profile picture, motherfucker, with a Black Lives Matter hashtag in my bio. I got the motherfucking Israel and the goddamn uh, Palestinian flag. Nobody got more support. Nobody support more than me, motherfucker. But this oh, this man. is crazy though. Y'all y'all ain't gonna get nowhere doing this shit. You guys know this, but it's easier. It's easier to vote and say I tried something than to actually fight for it and say, "Yeah, damn, yeah. we lost." I think that's, that's this, it. This, this this what people want. When, like we had pointed out uh, when we was talking about David Sirota, as, these people always talk about success and uh, uh, victories. We're gonna have losses uh, before, during, and after the revolution. It's not about you know what I'm saying. A, a, a straight up success is not about straight up winning. It's a fight. You fight to see who win. You don't fucking just give up because that guy looked tough. He looked tough, but ain't nobody else fought that nigga. You fought that nigga? No, I ain't really fought him. Yeah, he beat up a couple little niggas around the block, but he ain't really pick on nobody else like China. You know what I'm saying? Since China came up, man, he ain't, fuck with, ain't nobody fucking with China around the corner. Man, he ain't even fuck with, man. Come on now. Like, I think if anybody can take down America, it's going to have to be the proletarian. We can't wait for Russia. We can't wait for China. And this is what their, uh, their people have been telling us. They have been brainwashing us. They have been feeding us lies about, about the East, about Asia, about Russia, about Africa. Some of these people still believe Africa is a, is a third world continent. Can you believe that? They have been, they have been telling us lies. And it's going to be up to us to liberate ourselves. And then once we you know, uh, grow into power and, and, and try to establish things, then we can come to negotiation with someone like uh, uh, someone, whoever's going to be in power uh, uh, in China at the time, whoever's going to be in control of Russia at the time. But it's up to us to liberate ourselves. No man can set you free, no matter how white his smile is, no matter how good he looks, no matter how good she looks, or the sex appeal, or the charisma. If you're going to fight fascism, you're going to get ugly. You might die. When your life is in jeopardy, that's when you know that you are fighting fascism. When you can't go to sleep because of the FBI, it's, only, it's controlling you and watching your every fucking move. The CIA is watching you. That's when you know you are fighting fascism. But when you are giving a power, a, a, a position of power in the government of fascism, and you're telling me that you're fighting it? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's absurd. When you lay out the logic, Rome, it sounds so absurd. And to, their, to that point about um, hero worshiping actually being dangerous because it's propping up a lot of war votes, a lot of war funding. And Nick talks about it in this clip that I wanted to play. Let's listen to Nick. Think about the Iron Dome, right? So people will say, well, this is defensive. The Iron Dome shoots down missiles, so it's not a big deal that the squad is complicit with funding the Iron Dome $1 billion more. In order to explain how the Iron Dome is not defensive, allow me to give you guys an analogy to explain to how the Iron Dome works. Imagine if some guy went to the mall and he had a sword and he had a shield. And then he went around stabbing the shit out of people with his sword and shield. Well, with his sword. But in order people realizing that this maniac is stabbing the shit out of people, they come to stop him. They're like, oh shit, this dude is stabbing the fucking shit out of people. Someone stop him. So then he uses shield to stop people, to stop him from stabbing people. 
You guys see how the shield becomes a weapon of the sword? That's what the Iron Dome is doing. Israel is stealing the lands of Palestinians. They are robbing them of their human rights, and they are bombing them overnight, right? So Israel is launching an offensive in Palestine, in Gaza. So the only response that the Palestinians have is to fight back in order to deter colonialism. They have to deter Israelis from committing war crime against their people. So they do that with offense. So the shield in this situation is inherently, it cannot be defensive because it's coming from an offensive threat. Do you guys understand the concept? Am I clear here? If you have a riot shield, another example, I used to play Call of Duty all the time. They had this bill, you had the riot shield, you have the mm -hmm. gun, you got the riot shield and you hiding behind it and you're shooting people behind the riot shield. That's the Iron Dome. Israel launches way more missiles. They kill way, and I'm talking about magnitudes more people than Palestine, Palestinians kill Israel. So it's not defensive. But LC gave fucking lip service and you often compare, we often compare as a channel, LC to Nancy Pelosi. And we hear her go off on that word salad that means fucking nothing. How is that not different from LC? She's dangerous. Yeah, I just see someone right now. <laughs> uh, this is the last time I just read. LC is dangerous. Yeah. Yes, and to to Nick's point that he's saying there, um, and this this is where hero worshiping feeds into bad behavior. Hero worshiping is dangerous. It's all of the above. It doesn't allow for coalition building. So let's talk I wanna, about. I want to ask. Ahead. I, I want to yeah. ask these dumbass Americans. When have America ever supported anybody for defense? <laughs> when have we ever? Wait, what? That shit don't work like that. We use these countries for offense. We are arming the country that supposedly attacked us right. in 9-11. When have we ever gave a country money for defense? We give them money and weapons for our offense, for to be our cannon filler. All this defense talk is just uh, 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 it's just a way for them to block the fucking uh, block the criticism. You know what I'm saying? Shy away from a fight. No, motherfucker. You voted for that shit. I don't care if you cry. I don't care if you cry while you said it. While you was doing it. You did it. You know what you was doing and all this shit. Right now, what you're doing right now, it seems like political theater. Because if you really care, you would have ripped that motherfucker up. Like Nancy Pelosi ripped up Trump's speech, right? Yeah. Make that shit yeah. count. Do that shit on the floor. Do that shit to one of these billionaires' bills, right? But you have yet to do that type of shit. Any man, one of these progressives have ripped up a a, a bill or or, or, or sending people uh, sending money to Ukraine. They have yet to rip up any of this shit. We still got embargo. Haven't said anything on that shit. But they progressive, and we the grifters. We the ones who want to see the world. We the ones who want to see the world in, in, in despair. Not not them, not them. That's literally building weapons and bombing fucking countries, killing children. When you see the children, when you look at what's happening in Yemen, and you look at what's happening over there in Palestine, remember. Your people did this. The people that you supported, the progressive wing of the Democratic Party made this so. Why shouldn't they have the blood on their hands? Because Mitch McConnell voted for the same shit. And if I was to talk shit about him, y'all would agree and clap and cheer and be like, yeah, call him out. And I'm like, oh, look like AOC voted for it too. Oh, <laughs> you're checking it too far, Rome. <laughs> she had to do that because... Yeah. It, it make her look like she can, you know, actually work in between party lines and get things done. Get things done like what? Because what do we have even, what what do they have that they can uh, uh, even promise us during these midterms that we don't, we want, that we throw our hands at? Because motherfuckers, they even took away Roe versus Wade. And I see, I see uh, uh, women, and even trans women, trans men that can give birth saying, I'm still not voting. 
These motherfuckers saying, oh, it's on, it's on the ballot. Reproductive rights are on the ballot. And people with reproductive systems, like, fuck you. And rightfully so. Because you could have been doing something about this. Obama said, this is my first bro, whatever the fuck. <laughs> but they play with your life. Don't play with your life. Don't play with your fucking life, y'all. Because this is what they are doing. Who are who 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 is going to take your life serious if you don't? Let's uh let me read a snippet of this to piggyback off of uh and then we're going to bring it to a close a little in a few minutes but read this part from uh this article it piggybacks on what what uh, Nick was saying in the video about voting for Israel funding Israel. So this talks this is titled New York Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez reneges on pledge to vote against bill funding Israel Israeli war crimes. So this is written a year ago this this month. Oh yeah. Last Thursday the House Representatives House the House of Representatives in an overwhelming 420 to 9 bipartisan vote passed a supplemental legislation passed supplemental legislation that would provide 1 billion to the government of Israel for the procurement of the Iron Dome system and in support of the Operation Guardian of the Wall. The bill was brought to the floor separately from the spending package it was originally attached to after New York representative and DSA member AOC spearheaded the effort alone with others, uh, other members of the squad, such as Democratic lawmaker uh, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, to save to have the military funding stripped from the emergency uh, spending package. Now I remember this, and they came out when I'm talking about the 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 reformist uh, professional managerial class left in media. When they, oh, they came out of the squad. They made all kind of content. But then they didn't talk about the second part. They it never came true. back and made another video. Because let's let's read on. Ocasio-Cortez, despite her denunciation earlier this year of the Biden administration's support of Israeli military action and leading the effort to have it stripped out, at the last minute on Thursday after the votes were counted, reversed her vote, her no vote, <laughs> Against the funding. Don't, don't, don't talk about it. Don't, don't do it, CJ. Don't do it. Don't say it. Don't fucking say it. Don't Instead, say it. voted present on the bill. Yeah! Taking no position against the, or uh, essentially taking no position against the. You only, fucking only grifter, race, you! <laughs> uh, ethnic cleansing campaign against the Palestinians. After her reversal, look at this, C-SPAN cameras observed the congressman crying and the next day, Ocasio yeah. a 900 word uh, statement admitting she wept while attempting and failing to explain her backside. Her backslide. Quote, I want to be clear with our community that I'm opposed to this bill but ultimately cast a present vote. My job as your representative is to first and foremost serve and with transparency and remain accountable to you, the people of New York 14th Congressional District. What the fuck did that even say? I'll pause there and that's really all I wanted to read. Just to prove the point that AOC is doing things against progressive policies and we critique and then there's hero worshiping Captain Save a politicians that <laughs> jump in. You see the, the danger in this? Um, but Rome, I'll give you some some uh, closing words on the segment at least. Uh, which sort of like you you're wrapping it up the segment, yeah, man, your yeah, thoughts yeah. on all of this uh, here. Yeah, man. I'm just... I'm just saying, like, like, yeah, she, she, uh, she lining herself up to be the next Nancy Pelosi, but hopefully, you motherfuckers get your mind right, and we get our shit together, so there will be no none of that. You know what I'm saying? None of that. We, we're not gonna keep going through this cycle. It, 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 we, uh, we owe it to the future generations to deliver them something. The, all the shit that we talk about, boomers. All the shit that we talk about, yeah. the past generations. You know. At least 
we can deliver something to the next generations. So all, all jokes aside, get y'all shit together. Figure out what is your fight in the revolution. Everybody has a fight in a revolution, whether you are disabled, whether you are white, whether you are black, whether you are here, whether you are there, near, near here or there. Get your shit together because they got that shit together. They have solidarity and we need solidarity. Stop thinking about all of these titles that they have created amongst the proletarian to separate you. Mm -hmm. They call you a manager, they call you this, they call you that, but they are yet to call you human. It's one thing that the government has yet to call you yet or treat you as. Absolutely. Oh, sorry. Absolutely, Rome. Uh, great closing words for this segment. And I'll just recap for those that came in late. Hero worshiping, the title, how hero worshiping prevents coalition building with PMCs. How do you build? I'm going to read the five points. How do you build coalition with a group of, of people who policy stances change or flexible or become nuanced? Uh, two, hero worshiping creates a barrier between those doing the hero worshiping and any person that critiques them. Three, hero worshiping gives a politician false sense of accomplishment and superiority because you're not critiquing them for their bad behavior. Four, hero worshiping feeds a, politi a politician's bad behavior and induces corruption. AOC giving CIA Democrats money, money that she raised poss quite possibly from somewhere else. It induces corruption and uh, finding ways to 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 say why you're voting for uh, Iron Domes or allowing the passage of it. Um, so, and then the last point, hero worshiping undermines any sort of coordinated inside game. I don't know if we discussed that part and you can comment on it, but think about that. Insight, how do you have an inside game with hero worshiping? How is that? Because on the outside, when you're supposed to be adversarial and bringing the noise, you're too busy trying to gain access. You're too busy trying to be nice to the people who are voting for NATO. So, uh, so Rome, if you wanted well, to add any part of that, go ahead. These people literally get people killed, man. We are we are speaking on people that you know write law write lives off daily. You know, the only the only way an inside game would work is if you were to get close to these lobbyists, these powerful people, and put them out of their misery, I should say, nicely. <laughs> that's, the nicest I could, that's the nicest way I can say it. The only way people are going to take you serious is if you take yourself serious. That's the only way an inside game is actually going to work. You, you are around people who kill people for a living. <laughs> they kill people for a living. They, they, have to uh, uh, negotiate around capitalism of how many people we want to save, how many people is going to die, right? The only inside game that's going to work is if, you, if you've been radical and you're getting close enough to these people to actually do something to them. See, look, yes, something's going to happen to you, of course, but the fight is way bigger than you. The white the, the fight is way bigger than than all of us. We fighting for, for future generations. We setting shit in stone. So when when we talking about you know uh, uh, shit like this and powerful people going that one person we just saved many lives stopping this one person one person. Now think about what happens when we free up all of this money and all of our wealth that's controlled by. 14 more of them people. Now think about the other 20 people that has their hand in the cookie jar of corruption. If we start to make these people out of examples, we don't need many to make an example. And it's a lot of us, millions, millions of us. And a lot of us have already lost our life. We have already been beaten down. What else can you lose? <laughs> you you have done nothing but gain. And remember, 
The revolution will make sure you will never die. You will never die fighting and leading for the revolution. This is why we are here today, because of people that fought, people that led from Marx to Malcolm. We are here today because of them. And it can be you one day. It might be. But what, what are you fighting for? Who are you fighting for? If you're going to fight it all, fight for it all. Fight for everyone. Absolutely, Rome. Beautiful. Um, like the stream, a couple of more things just to, to cover and, and talk about. But before we do that, I haven't done this in a while. But we had 310 likes. Can we push that to 350, 40 more likes? We got a lot of new people, certainly enough to get 40 more likes. So let's get 40 more likes for this weekend edition of the Rome and CJ show. Uh, like the stream. Uh, if you are interested in getting on the mailing list so you're notified for when we do the surprise streams, here is our Substack. Join our Substack um, if you are interested. Two things um, before we head out of here, Rome, because we do, we have a meeting actually at RBA yeah. member meeting. We got to get out of here. So that's the reason why we got to kind of uh, cut this. So, so this article that was supposed to be covered today, the global strike wave and the crisis of revolutionary leadership, we're going to have to push this to a different uh, day, possibly tomorrow. I believe we're going to have a on to talk about her article about Aretha Franklin. That's good. Um, uh, tomorrow, I believe, is scheduled, but I'll double check. Um, if we have time, I'll add this in there: a global strike wave in the crisis of revolutionary leader. Be, and it kind of just basically talks about how the 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 it's in the air. Revolution is here, but we don't really have the people we need out there now. That's known, um, like we're not nationally known. So, but there we're, there's not anybody that's nationally known that's ready. Like they're talking about AOC and Marion Williams, like that's fucking laughable. That's why we are able to get powerhouses on our channel because you know, and, and well known people because we take we don't only take ourselves serious, we take the people serious, and they see that mm -hmm. this will go far. We do have potential, and I'd be a fool if I, I, ain't, I ain't tooting our own horn or whatnot, but. RBN is the shit compared to these other channels. They ain't like we got damn near everything. Entertainment, people laugh, they come, they cry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? About we got that sports. and fucking we doing mutual aid and yeah. I'm, what the fuck you getting? What, what else? Is the, what else we're gonna do weather? Like? We're gonna do missing children. That's coming. The sports show is yeah. coming. I'm doing that with Chuck Modi. He's a sports <laughs> in a sports writer. I'm gonna be doing that. That's coming. So we're gonna be doing a a lot on this channel we want you to come here for entertainment for the political revolution we're a family so family don't only just talk about revolution yeah. we talk about comedy we talk about weather we talk about you know each other other <laughs> things so <laughs> this is going to be our closeout video but before we go we have the uh at activist summit that's coming up august i'm sorry uh october 20 where is it at i have the graphic here october 20 oh here it goes october 22nd and 23rd we have a meeting in a few minutes right now to talk about that and go over some of the things that's going to be happening during that time we just did savvy was out in washington dc for the hands-off assange rally we had Rome down in Jackson, Mississippi, representing uh, Tour oh, for the yeah. Poor and RBN, handing out uh, bottles of water. And then we didn't report on this, but Nick was out in at the KC Tenants event yesterday. Yep. He reported on that. Thanks for putting that up there. Um, he reported on that. So there's a lot of good... Um, rbn is uh doing so support us our patreon is the best way to support us um super chats are always good um our venmos our our um our venmos and our you know all of our other cash app and paypal that's I'm also thinking about great PayPal, way to man. i'm thinking about deleting paypal it's a lot of prep problems i still got money on man, you on ain't seen that shit yeah, I you ain't see that shit they was talking about. Oh, finding niggas twenty five hundred. 
Oh yeah, no. What? But hey. give the details, people that don't know what what you're talking about. Give the, a little bit of yeah. detail what you're talking about. PayPal was talking about taking uh twenty five hundred out of people mm. account for spreading misinformation on the internet. So if your shit tied, if your name and your profile basically link, they link you enough, they can they're gonna take two thousand five hundred out of your out of your account. Enough people, a lot. Luckily, the proletarian was like, no, and it was people from the left to the right. I don't went from I was on Twitter <laughs> just looking wormhole through all all types of wormholes. Left, right, even Democrats was like, "Yeah, I'm deleting this shit." They ain't about no, no way. Like y'all, y'all taking this shit too far. But this is what happens. I hope you guys learned your lesson. Now they already locked up Julian Assange. Luckily, Snowden got his Russian citizenship. You know, but this is what happens when you guys try to censor the proletarian. You think they're only going to censor your enemies? They're going to censor all of you motherfuckers. <laughs> all of you. And charge you for it. Ain't that about a bitch? <laughs> that, that is. Uh, I just wanted to briefly show you the content of the KC Tenants Union. And this is Nick filming this footage. He was down at the rally they had. The rent is too damn high. I see that back there. But this is one of the speakers. Let's listen briefly to this. In the last years, I have felt powerful. When the people shut down eviction courts, keeping thousands of tenants like us in their homes during a global pandemic. That's right. That's right. When the homeless organized a union and forced the city to the table. Right. When Gabriel Tower tenants organized a union and got the air conditioning turned back on. Right. When the residents of Heart Village Mobile Homes organized a union chanting homes not jails, and move $2.7 million from the county. Let's go. I said that in order to survive, we got to leave our people behind. I am not interested in power if it means power alone. I am only interested in power if it means power for all of us. I've seen what we can do. Now, I didn't watch this. But this shit is set up so perfectly. One, you was just talking about this. It's all or nothing. It's for everybody. And she's saying, I'm not interested in power, power for one. But this also speaks to the hero worshiping. Yeah. Like this, this it speaks to that too. But let's let her finish and then we'll comment on. At least she's doing she something. Said. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> at, least she, at least they suck out a bit more reason. <laughs> means power alone. I am only interested in power if it means power for all of us. Right. I've seen what we can do when we come together. We're scrappy. People might look at us weird, but I know we are everything. We are everything we need. It can feel inevitable that this city will be run by people who are out of touch with people like us. It can feel inevitable that this city will place will be a place where people in power hoard their power, lord it over us, call us only when it's convenient, dismiss and patronize us. But it is not inevitable. Today is the day that changes. My name is Janae Manley. I am a resident of the second district. And without saying too much too soon, I intend to be a part of that change. I hope. I hope. You know what the you know what the you know what the fair is gonna do? They're gonna send somebody in her operation and they're gonna get in her ear about running for office. And I hope that she don't listen to a near not a word. Because it's gonna put her flame out. They they're gonna put her flame out. And I always mm -hmm. explain this to people who want me to run for office. Can y'all imagine me in office? I try to keep it calm on here. I'm really going to have to be. No, it don't work like that. man. Right? It don't work like that. And you're going to be like, damn, why is Rome compromising on life, life and death bills? Because it's a job you guys wanted for me. You sent me in a fucking in a in a alligator infestant swamp. It's either I become aggressive 
and play with the alligators and wrestle with the alligators or I become bait. All right. Yeah. Um, so this is our in our uh closing video. Um, we're gonna go ahead and close out the Rome and CJ show for this Sunday, October ninth. Um, I got a 15 minute break, Rome, and then we have a meeting. So um, so uh, like the stream on your way out. Have a great rest of your uh, Sunday. We'll be back at it with content tomorrow. And then, of course, for the rest of the week. Shout out to Sabby for winning those awards. Shout out for to uh, RBN for winning the one um, that that we Ooh. that we won. Um, they can't ignore us anymore. We're doing it in the community and we're going to be here back at this streaming um, they just cannot do that. Uh, because all that hate following, hey, I just want to tell you, motherfuckers, that hate following ain't gonna get you far, bitch. Ain't gonna get you far. Hey, <laughs> you, you, you might get a couple of motherfucking likes. You might, you might go, you might get a thousand likes, but that shit ain't gonna last long. Having the motherfuckers bots any fucking way, but that's that hate ain't gonna last long. You need to get that hate out your heart, and the better we do, the more stupid you look. When you try to critique us, how can you talk about us when all of us are doing the damn thing? All of us are raising money for, for mutual aid. We not only have mutual aid, we have solidarity and we spread in the communist mm -hmm. message with the things that we are giving, with the things that we are giving. And we, so there's nothing that you can say. We are doing way better than, uh, uh, than expectations than your favorite progressive. <laughs> so suck my yeah. dick. And that shit ain't gonna last. <laughs> Rome. Uh, <laughs> and to your point, like also we help, I mean, helping JB with his housing, Man. like that, that was huge that we was able to come to our community and raise $5,400, literally an amount of what, two and a half, three weeks, $5,400 yep. to keep him in housing with him and his mom. Like he, he is trying to provide for his mom also, which is key. And she came on here and she gave a show thinking about doing it. Them two doing the show. I'm going to do a content with my wife, actually. It'll what? Be Jay, Coming on? Jay, Jay and Tiff show. I think we might do it next week. It'll be just one episode. I'm going to see how it goes. Okay. But my wife is not a leftist like You got to push back on her, though, it'll man. Be, you can't let her slide, man. I don't let my girl slide. You can't let your girl slide, man. Yeah, it'll be interesting. So we we'll talk. Um, but I think next on the weekend, since she she you know her outside job is is uh you know in, out in the field, so yeah. she can't do it during the week. It's harder for her. I have a more flexible job. Yeah. So sure her, it'll be like on the next weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. We'll try to put in like an hour of the of the J and the. I, I we call Jay for that, not Compton Jay. The Jay and Tiffany show, <laughs> not Compton Jay for that. So no, no, just, I, I got on my I got on my clean shirt today. I got yeah, I'll be, today. yeah. So I just got to figure out the setup <laughs> of the show. So um, and figure out the mic situation. But all right, uh, I think that's it. Uh, we're gonna end with this uh, this uh, critique of uh, sort of like uh, the black uh, bourgeoisie culture and just racism white supremacy and uh white white acceptance of white supremacy so this is a great video to listen to um shout out to everybody watching on twitter on facebook on twitch um i'm missing one on rockfin uh thank you for your support and here is our closing video where's it right here let me put it to you this way we are proud of being black and of our black heritage. But white America does not accept the concept that this is a multiracial society. It has never accepted the fact that, that there are black people, brown people, yellow people here alongside them. They've always looked upon America as being white. And hence, all of its propaganda is directed at us to convince us that somehow or the other, we must become white before they will accept us. Even a publication like Ebony with a subscription of something like 800,000 Negro subscribers is written for what we call the low visibility Negro, you know, the light skinned Negro. With a rare exception, Ebony never features the activities of the black man in this country. It's always that low visibility, you know, the almost white Negro and how you too can be this way one day if you use some of the skin lightness that they 
running their advertisement. I mean, when it runs ads like Dr. Fred Palmer's skin whitens, it, it is denial of the fact that black people exist, that somehow or the other, in order for us to exist, uh, we must resort to using hair straighteners so our hair won't be kinky, that somehow if we could only hide our blackness, we can then become part of this thing called the American melting pot or the American...